Okay, so at the moment the robot does not have the chip on board. So they are giving a demonstration of uh, the usage of the chip uh, with a video as uh, the main purpose of the chip is to update the environment of uh, environmental knowledge of the robot to be uh, able to do basic tasks like pouring uh, your cereal into your bowl. One of the other things that they were going to demonstrate in this challenge was uh, the usage of a soft hand which they have developed in-house. And the soft hand uh, comes with some onboard sensing. The robot is now going to try to move the bed. Uh, it's, it's going to the bedroom. The robot is looking for the homeowner in the bedroom. The, 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 home, the homeowner is waving. The robot is trying to detect a waving person. The robot is taking its own sweet time to detect the homeowner. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it acts.
everyone we will be switching the recording of the at home will be shown uh, later this week we will have the video online so we will be switching over to the game uh, uh, kit size final Roban versus Sid Brains score at the moment is 2 to 1 for uh, Roban really nice and they can kick quickly but unfortunately goes into player number 2 CIT Brains yeah. and they are now well positioned for a kick and they kick past their striker player. Yeah, as, as, you, as you said earlier, it's uh, really important to be quick, to be, uh, to be faster than your opponent. So player number uh, five, who appears to come from the goal, is now attack, coming towards the ball and kicks nicely through the players. Uh, player number six from CIT Brains appears to be on the ball. That's uh, something I realized when the five went out to kick the ball away. Yeah. One, the one, Wait. the blue one, get, got back to make sure someone is at the goal. Exactly, it's very nice. They, need, they seem to have very good uh, goal switching behavior. Yes. So, unfortunately, player two is not in correctly positioned. Uh, Skirty brings the wrong side of the ball, but they appear to have possession. I and think now it's an advantage for CIT because they have more players around that area yeah. and uh, Roban is further away. Oh, but they oh. have kicked towards the Roban player, that's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, but it's behind the Roban player. Yeah. He sees the ball, but he needs to reposition himself. Yeah. And uh, now the CIT brains got has in blocked between. the Roban player. So the CIT brains currently have good possession. He's now kicked towards the goal. Yeah. We see and blue one from Roban is already starting defending. Yeah. Uh, but red six from CIT also coming towards it. And they would probably go for side. Oh, uh, no. So CIT brains kicked first, but unfortunately fell over in the process due to their defender. Yeah. We are at the, nearly at the end of the first half, so it's roughly a minute left. So it will be a close decision if we see another goal. They are fighting quite hard. Yeah. Oh, the player has fallen and is now blocking the other player. Uh, but they've fallen over, Robot also blocked. And uh, now the CIT Brains players come in. Uh, they have, like, CIT Brains are now currently well defended. Yeah, it's like a wall of three CIT Brains mm. players. They, they all really struggle now. Yeah. Um, so CIT Brains seem to uh, have successfully blocked that attack. And now and they now are they going for it. Over by the themselves. halfway line. And the Roban baby, uh, Roban robot wasn't quite sure whether or not they were going to be involved in that. Yeah, but Roban one already tries to clear. First half is done. Right, that's the end of the first half. So we have a five minute break and then it will go to the second half. So please stay with us. Five minutes break. So what do you think then? Uh, we have seen both teams scoring quite well. It is. Uh, I, I, I can't say who will win. I can't call it yet. It's um, very, very quick. But I mean, we'll see what happens in the halfway break. So uh, obviously they're now doing their battery changes. Why you see a lot of players now, like human players now out on the field. They're swapping over the batteries on the robots. Maybe someone pushes a configuration change that either improves or unimproves the robot. Um, you know, to make or break mistakes get uh, made in, you know, uh, the, these, these time periods. It's quite stressful. Um, you know, all it takes is someone to push the wrong configuration to the robot and suddenly, you know, something bad happens. Someone forgets to tell the robot it's now shooting in the other direction. Um, anything could happen. Uh, but both players, are, uh, both teams are playing really well. Yeah, you're right. We might remind the occasional uh, 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 person watching that it's uh, autonomous robots. So it's uh, the team programmed their software beforehand. They software to the robots, they push, uh, they put the robots on the field and then they are not allowed to interact anymore as long as the robots are on the field. Yeah. So, as, as you say, any, anything that is put into the software at the moment, the teams have to live with it or uh, the robots need to get taken out and that of course takes time to mm. re-push some And new as software. you can see, having you know even one less player in, in a game this tight is, is really severe. Um, you know, it, I think every player at some point has been involved in this. So, uh, yeah, no one, no one is spare. They really need all players. Yeah, even if it's just for someone to to, to block a match. Yeah. Both teams are working very hard. Um, yeah, I think we have about three minutes left in half time. I can't barely see. 
Yeah, so in, in the stream you can see the Robon players have now swapped over their batteries. Uh, some of them now have Ethernet cables in as well, so it looks like they're updating something in the software. Um, so, you know, there's always a risk involved. Obviously, you want to play your best, but, uh, you know, you never know. Yeah, it's very possible you, you push something bad and uh, you know, the, this could lose the match for you. So they, teams are, you know, taking a risk, but obviously a risk they believe that will benefit at them. As you said, every second that you are on the field was one less robot than the other team. It could be the deciding second. Mm. Because then uh, the other team has an advantage of having more, more players to play or to just go around you. I think we see Robon with more laptops open uh, uh, touching configuration than CIT brands. It'd be very interesting to see what they pull out in the second half. We also see uh, the CIT brands uh, brains, uh, uh, fanning their robots, so it appears they have some kind of heating issue, maybe related to the flashing we saw earlier. Yeah, uh, just for the question from the chat, it's half time. We have a half time score of uh, two versus uh, uh, two. So we are waiting for the start of the second half in about a bit of less than two minutes. Mm, actually, so, we now so we are here to have this uh, final humanoid kit size game between CIT brand from Japan and Roban from France. Uh, Roban playing in blue, CIT brand playing in red. Yeah, so we, it, it just in the stream view, we could now see uh, someone changing the configuration on the robot for CIT brains as well. So both of them potentially playing with something new or, 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 or changed. Um, so yeah, the second half will be equally as interesting. We, we really have no idea what's going to happen. So just a minute or so. Yeah, we already see that most uh, most teams have their robots already prepared mm -hmm. on the field. They are waiting at the side. So something I noticed before we started, uh, CIT brains stand straight. This is uh, less stress on their motors. Um, and Robon stands uh, in a more stable position with knees bent. So uh, maybe this indicates that Robon have some potential uh, issue with their motors, like cooling, for example. Um, they, 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 in the past, they've also been more concerned about their motors. So. Yeah, let's hope their hardware uh, keeps strong for them and, and they, they perform their best. Yeah, let's hope that uh, no robot breaks down and we can really see uh, who has done the best work on software. Yeah. So it's about 30 minutes, so uh, 30, sorry, 30 seconds. Uh, so uh, members of teams will uh, leave the field. Yeah. So only robot handlers are allowed alongside the field, but only for really serious situations where they get asked by the referee to pick a robot. Uh, 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 so oh. CIT brains have just called a timeout, which I believe lasts for two minutes? Uh, yes, it's two minutes. Yeah. So during a, a timeout can be called during a stoppage of the game, and so it's just for two minutes, and it's a chance for teams to, um, yeah, to, to use their time for anything that, like, halftime wasn't enough, like the halftime break. It might, we might even be quick, uh, back quicker because they don't have to take the full two, uh, two minutes. They yeah. could uh, end it. Uh, uh, it looks like that may be the case. Uh, the human players are oh, there, are just about to look at another robot. So, yeah, there's something they're pushing and they want it to be consistent across their robots. So, it'll be very interesting to see where they go. They're still fanning off their robots as well on the side. So, th there's obviously some concern there. Um, one of their robots has slightly bent knees and the others appear to be straight. So. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they have one on the other side. Uh, uh, the red one is also mm. bent knees. Did they only have one platform uh, when they qualified, or, or is there several platforms here? I think they only have one platform. Mm. But uh, yes, you're right mentioning it. It's, uh, as long as it's within the rules, they could you, uh, could have up to four or five. Di well, for, for game match, it's four versus four, mm. but they could have up to five or six different uh, platforms that they use uh, during this tournament. Yeah. And I think there have been teams uh, doing that, like uh, sometimes having an old platform from previous years, but also trying out something with a new platform uh, in a tournament before rebuilding everything, because rebuilding takes time uh, if, if you want to build a new robot or if you want to grow up in a smaller robot. Yeah. As you can see, both teams have uh, like smooth hands. Um, I don't know how well that comes through in the stream, but that's to help with getting up. So. Uh, they're quite high-level players, but obviously when they hit into one another, they don't see each other, something unexpected happens, they fall over, and uh, they, they, this helps them not get caught on the artificial grass. So it's quite a challenging environment for them. Um, as you can see, there's white goals, white lines, the ball is, uh, you know, some 50% uh, or so white. 
um, and it's artificial grass. It's a very challenging environment from a, from a robotics perspective. Yes, we can even see it in, uh, in the camera that the artificial grass also has some kind of bite in it. Okay, the, the timeout has ended so and we are about to start the second half. So it's a good sign they both recognize the correct sides of the field, so we're off, we're off to a good start. Um, both the team's goalkeepers are positioning themselves, so yeah. that's free and uh, a robot number five. I Roban. believe it's kickoff for Roban. Yes. At least, at least the, the, the teams are believe that. Yes. Uh, they're not well positioned currently to start a kick, but they will hopefully reposition themselves. Looks like maybe if you go for a diagonal. Oh, that was unexpected. So a diagonal kick across, and that's gone across the majority of the CIT Brains defence. Yeah, but then again, uh, it comes uh, into play that the CIT Brains are a lot faster, but uh, the red six. Oh, Robon Nantes, well positioned for a goal, potentially. Uh, oh, the goalie didn't see it. It's not a goal. It's not a goal. Not goal yet. It uh, needs to cross the uh, uh, goal oh. line fully. And now that's very challenging for the yeah, red goalie from CIT to clear that. They have very difficult because the ball is small, doesn't travel too far, and it's, it's very difficult to see exactly. Yeah, that's why the referee at this point uh, stands really on the goal line if the ball is like that to see perfectly when it's gone over. Yeah. Obviously, like normal football, it's not perfect, but, you know, the referee does their best uh, to enforce the rules and to make the game. It, m mostly it's okay. To we have a score of uh, three. Goalkeeper's been pulled off for being, you know, we said uh, during the half time, it's very. And this may not have paid off. It, there's one player turning around. I think it's more going for a So hopefully they can bring a player back on. And goal for Robon. Uh, okay, the ball is positioned towards there. It doesn't look like it's going to move very easily. Both have tried to kick it into one another. Uh, Robon was slightly. Again, four versus four. And just uh, in the nick of time, as the, the ball is now back into CIT Brains' half, so maybe the goalkeeper will be required very soon. Yes. Uh, kicks the ball off of the field. <laughs> so, in normal football, this is where you'd have a throw in, but uh, we'd have a drop in in this case. Actually, Robon in a previous competition did demonstrate a, a throw-in. It was very nice. Oh, the ball is being kicked further away from the field. Um, looks like they're having some trouble turning around the ball. As you said, it might have been that they changed some configuration during halftime, and that could have been a, not the best idea in, in this case. But you never know. Sometimes it is a match winner to change software and configuration. And sometimes it uh, can be the wrong decision. Mm, well, we saw both teams changing configuration. You see uh, Blue 1, for example, over at the Robon's goal, just facing the goal. So, uh, I mean, maybe this played configuration, maybe this is smooth behavior, but there's always some risk involved. Um, oh, the players are getting tangled and falling. Oh, uh, that's close. They very, very got, almost got quite tangled. So, it looks like Robon are now positioning themselves. Yeah. But we also have kind of like a wall of CIT robots uh, trying to get in. Uh, the robot thought it had fallen over and is now standing fallen down. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, this is one of these things. Okay, so CIT brains are now quite well positioned to defend from here. Um, they, they just need to make sure that they don't kick it outside again. Uh, but they are going round quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, still on the goal, uh, outside line. Oh, uh, yeah. Robon are now very well positioned Good to try and score a goal. Robin. They've kicked it across the goal, not quite out the goal. There's a CIT Brains player ready to kick the ball, potentially. And, and Robon currently have quite an open field. Oh, Robon very quick from Robon. are ready for a side kick and they score! We have a score of 4 for Robon and 2 for CIT Brains. So 
it's obviously quite a favourable position uh, for Robon to be in. Either, like, I mean, if uh, CIT Brains had been able to kick that ball out, they would have had like, a very relatively open field to score a goal against. So. I was quite surprised that CIT Brains Robot didn't react earlier because mm. Remember, we were seeing uh, them reacting really fast, and they were faster than Roban most yeah. of the time. And just now, it was like Roban sprinting to the ball, and the CIT brain didn't react. So it really could come down to a soccer change that's during halftime. Yeah. It's one of these things, or maybe I mean, I mean another option is the, these motors are, uh, uh, you know, pushed to the limit. Um, obviously, it doesn't look very strenuous, but for these tiny little motors, this is a lot of work. And, and these robots have been competing, you know, for days now. Uh, up until this point, there's been a lot of stress on the hardware. Um, you know, they're constantly being repaired to get them to this point. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. It could be software, it could be hardware. We just hope the teams are able to, to perform their best. So they're now kicking off. Robon are waiting outside the circle. They've kicked across. This is the IT brains. Yeah, that's a strategy to, to get uh, uh, from apart from their opponent. Yeah. But yeah, Robon has been prepared for that. And also... Oh, both robots have fallen, fallen at the ball. Robon are currently on the oh, ball. Oh, there's, there's something if, falling down from yeah. the Robon robot. If Robon are not careful, this will count as ball holding. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, that's ball holding. That ball holding. Been so a robot is not uh, allowed to hold a ball in a position where another player is nearly impossible to get it for longer than I think six, six seconds is it, it is. Mm. And so that's a free kick for CIT brains now. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that CIT brains need. I think we have uh, some five minutes left on the clock. Uh, yeah, and uh, the players that just got taken out from Roban, it was because it uh, did the ball holding, so that got a 30 second penalty. And there was also some piece that fell off. Um, yes, I hope that they will uh, get rid of that soon, otherwise the robot might step on it and uh, we don't know okay, what is going on. Okay, the robot's kick towards the corner of Roban. Yeah, they're probably also trying to, to get uh, oh, in the okay, both robots angled collided. corner. CIT Brains players been uh, penalised for pushing. So now we have three versus three on the field with mm. one player each outside well, for one, penalty. Well, I'll be honest, player player one appears to be inactive currently. He's been looking at the goal post for quite some time. Yeah, as someone asked in the chat, uh, we have the score currently four for Roban playing in blue. Uh, Roban from France against uh, CIT Brains playing in red. Uh, CIT Brains has two. So That's it's four to four two. two. Oh, both players are collided. Uh, it looks like CIT Brains are a little bit quicker to get up there, but let's see how they, they took advantage of that. They're on the opposite side of the ball, haven't yet seen it. Roban have seen the ball move to the ball line, and they're ready to kick, and they're kicking towards the goal. I think it didn't really hit it correctly, so it went a bit offside. No, robots are colliding. But I think, well, Roman has the initiative now, so it looks like in the second half, that's the half of, of Roman. Which is very nice cross kick towards the goal. CIT Brains currently doesn't have a goalkeeper in place. Six, player six is coming back. Yeah, but six, six is very slow, and four from Roman is all, already at the ball. I think it will be a lot of goal. The score is now 5-2 to Roban. So now the players reposition themselves. Unfortunately, uh, CIT Brains don't appear to currently actively have a goalie. I don't know where he went. Uh, there's a player by, uh, for CIT Brains that's currently on the wrong side of the field, so maybe it's badly localised. Yeah, may maybe they did a team change at some point, and player one uh, is the goalie uh, and thinks it needs to go in the other side. Yeah, because it seems to be looking at the other goal. Yeah, it seems to be making its way towards the other goal, so maybe it's accidentally flipped side and it's got confused. It's actually well positioned as a defence for the wrong team. So that player will get removed. We have about three minutes left, so we have seen in the first half and in the second half how quickly both teams are able to score goals. So everything yeah. is open, but I still would say that the initiative of the second half was mostly for Robon, and so best chances are probably for them to win, yeah. which they would, well, it is their home uh, hometown, 
Uh, we are in Bordeaux. The team is from Bordeaux, and uh, it, it will be a party night uh, for 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 everyone around here. Yeah, except like of course for for CIT Brand. Yeah. Well, I mean, no party anyway. Yeah. Probably. That's the nice thing about the league that we can also uh, party for other teams. But we had the kickoff, and uh, the ball is now in the half of Roba. Yeah. So Robert have kicked it towards the middle line. So we'll see what they do with the ball next. I believe CIT brains are very fast, but they've lost track of the ball momentarily. So Robon are now on the ball, and they may decide to kick out. No, nope, they've kicked across around both the CIT players. This is quite nice. See if they can get a run. Uh, the CIT brains players are incorrectly positioned. There's Robot pushing there. Um, CIT brains are now well positioned to defend that ball. And yeah, they nice, like nice walk kick. around, but the Robon players They're already picked. in the way. Ah, nice and that was very nicely positioned because player three for Robon is not well positioned. Oh, oh, now he just ne needs to decide quickly. Oh. Nice Robon's got a very nice kick towards CIT brains' goal, so they have a good brains' player. Yeah, uh, right on the area we see a robot of CIT brains not moving. He's probably broken down in software, but uh, Red 4 from CIT brains has found the ball. Yeah. It's just about one. Oh, no, he hasn't broken down. He's back again. So right now we have four robots from Robon. So if they have any chance. Towards the goal, if they can manage it. Unfortunately, it just fell over at the wrong time. Oh. The ball is very well positioned. Uh, potentially a very good run in the making here towards the goal. So just a reminder of the Swiss to score a goal here. Uh, so. yeah, a nice kick, not yeah, quite strong enough. Not, not strong enough, and now the players of Robana are entering the field again. And yeah. we hear the you probably hear the chanting here for everyone, so the Roban players so clear to defend. And, they, they defend and, the and there's some 15 seconds left on the clock, so it's very unlikely they get a goal now. Uh, but Roban have done a good job defending there, especially yeah. in such a short time. So while, while the first half was very evenly spread, the second half definitely is on Roban. They, mm. they really were good. And and that's, the end of the <laughs> that's the end of the match. So we have a final winner for Humanoid Kick Stars. It's Team Robot from France who won in Bordeaux, uh, where they also have their university. So congratulations to Robot. Final score is 5 to 2. But also, also congratulations to CIT Brains from Japan for coming second. They still had to go through the whole tournament to come up here. So congratulations to both teams. And this year's world champion in humanoid kid size, it's Team Roban. So I'm Jessica. I thank you for watching. Uh, with me, thank you, Dan. No problem. It's been great to watch this game. Great to be with you, Jessica. Uh, thank you all for watching. But please remember, there's also other size final coming up on our second streaming channel, which will be posted in the chat soon. Uh, thank you everyone and hope to see you again.
uh, by Shilink, who is really um, doing a nice dribble as the um, there's a fight for the ball and there's some chip across the field as it uh, leaves the ball on the right side for Chulink to actually take. This is a great opportunity for Chulink to um, potentially score a goal here. As we see that Lovelace is defending. Uh, as Lovelace takes the ball um, and shoots it away, which is either... Yeah. Uh, since uh, Tigers was too close while the ball was being kicked. Yes. As uh, Zilink now gets to take the ball, and there's a quick pass to the defender. As Zilink is now in front of the goal, possibly ready to shoot as the ball gets deflected away again. So the ball was quickly placed again by Kicks, now ready for uh, kickoff, and they pass over the upper field, but Tigers intercepted the ball. As there is a quick one, two. As the ball is intercepted once more by Schilling with the football. Oh, oh, the ball. And really, really close stuff, as I do see that the robot that is currently trying to get the ball has a bit of an interesting gap, uh, a lot of exposed electronics, uh, though it possibly doesn't matter, as number 12 is performing very well, as the ball is now with Sue linked for a uh, corner next to the field on your right. As there's a beautiful chip. But deflected by the Tigers and uh, kicked out of the uh, back line of the field. Very well defended. It means uh, a corner kick for uh, Jean Link. They placed the ball beautifully, and here we go. Nice, beautiful Very chip. Very nice chip as the Tigers' defense is on point. As uh, the ball is now taken by Tigers in order to be placed as we continue the game from the right side of the field. As our lovely French commentators are indeed saying, it is still 0-0 in the first half of the game with 2 minutes and 30 seconds of game time remaining. As the ball is for, I believe, Stuling to bring back into the game once uh, it is no longer stopped. As I do believe that uh, there is some discussion going on at the referee desk, um, where we also have our lovely vision expert who is uh, potentially signaling to us in case there are any noteworthy discussions taking place. Yeah, so our vision expert actually is notifying us with the discussion that's going on. Uh, it is about uh, if Tigers has been dribbling for too long. As we uh, all hopefully know by now because of watching all these live streams, we know that a robot is only allowed to dribble with the ball for one meter uh, maximum. So now the discussion is if Tigers are dribbling for more than one meter or not. As uh, we don't really know what the conclusion is, but it's probably all fine as the game continues with the possession for Zilink as the ball shoots across the goal field and, and, and exits on the left side of your field. As we see some great pressuring moves by Zilink, who's been mostly on the side of uh, Tigers, except for some uh, early skirmishes at the uh, beginning of the game. Uh, for all the people watching through at home, if you have any questions about the stuff that you are seeing, if you have some other requests or if you have ideas for post-game interviews or other content, please let us know and we'd be happy to answer them for you. So there's once more a, a great chip from uh, Chulink across the field which gets deflected and now it is up to Gandalf who always has the famous slogan Thou shall not pass, do not let the ball pass into the goal as Chulink is once more dribbling very fancily at the middle of the field as there is now a clear opportunity which is defended by Tigers. <laughs> Uh, 
And I have to say, uh, I agree with the people in the live chat saying that it's a great game so far. I definitely agree. Uh, a lot of excitement, fast-paced game. Um, a lot of great chips and passes. Uh, I can't wait to see what, uh, what's waiting for us in the next one and a half minutes of this first half. As we um, are around the center field, there is a uh, it's a bit crowded around the center as uh, both dribbles from Chu Ling and Tigers are diving towards the ball, fighting for that ball for the possession. As we now move into the side of uh, Zhu Ling, as there's a beautiful shot on goal and a defense by the keepers from Zhu Ling. It's now up to Tigers to place the ball uh, near the corner as there's a potential and we've seen so many goals by Tigers this way as there will likely be a chip across the field and there's actually a straight ball across the field as there's some of Tigers that is deflected by the keeper. Perhaps we can get a replay on that a little bit later. Um, as it is once more uh, the opportunity for Tigers to place the ball near the corner field uh, as we will continue the game. Yeah, let's see if they, oh, they kick this, uh, oh, and it's a very good ball. Oh. This is one great keeper that Yunling has. As... Tigers already creating a lot of opportunities for them to actually score a ball. It's now we're waiting for ball placement. And they did that successfully. As there's a timeout for Blue, and it gives me some time to adjust the camera at the far side of the field. Yes, as your link has requested a timeout, it also uh, allows for Tigers to modify their robots and their software if they want to. We see the robot handler of Shun Link walking onto the field, uh, checking some parts while the robots can adjust their positions, and then going back into this wonderful Z shape as Tigers still remains in their T shape. Representing, of course, uh, their name, Tigers Mannheim. The timeout is still going, uh, but I feel like they might be done with it. I really hope that Julie Grobo Handler realizes that he has to stop the timeout before the game can commence. But for the moment, there's still a, a bit of a chat going on with, uh, with the referee. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm not sure if he realized that the timeout is still running. Um, or he's waiting for his team members to finish up some of the programming. As um, I must say, Amy, that. Uh, after, of course, last game against Immortals, which was a clear 0-7 uh, victory by Zilinkt, I talked to Jesse uh, about his preparations for the Tigers match, in which he said that he definitely had uh, or spent last night uh, creating some clever tactics uh, to play against the Tigers team. And I definitely think that this tactic is showing as uh, he is definitely not showing any nerve here, uh, being very calm and collected uh, against the... Um, People are the, the great team from Tigers. It's proving to be an incredible game. Let's watch. Yeah, I feel like Shulnik definitely had some tricks up his their sleeves. Um, since they're a real strong competitor here for Tigers, who uh, was victorious last year in the Road Cup 2022 in Bangkok, Thailand. Of course, this was a uh, competition in which Shulnik wasn't playing last year, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct, that is correct. That is correct. So uh, it is great to see that these two teams are going head to head as there is some strong competition. Um, of course, we have seen earlier games in this tournament where uh, was, uh, uh did actually lose against Tigers. Um, but now they seem to be holding up strong as nothing has happened yet. As it's 0-0 in the first half with 32 seconds of game time remaining.
you at home. Uh, I do note that uh, the right side goal camera is a bit blurry. That is because it's a wireless connection streaming over a 4G network to my computer, uh, which leaves way for a lot of uh, blurriness. Uh, although I do think it's a really nice view, so from time to time I will keep it in. Uh, though the corner view, uh, of course, also shows quite a lot. Uh, perhaps whilst there's a robot substitution, we can quickly go to the timeout or to the replay uh, of a potential goal here from uh, Tigers. I don't, I don't actually know what it was time said. It was a shot here in goal, which was deflected by the keeper as we once more uh, go back to the uh, broad view of the game. With only 20 seconds left in the first half, you see that the game is being halted. Um, because the ball was kicked over the field boundary, uh, but I see it's already back in the field, uh, ready to be placed and um, be uh, kicked by uh, Jun Ligt, who has a very nice chip all the way to the middle of the field, where uh, Tigers takes the ball. Uh, there's a bit of a, a battle going on in the center of the field, uh, but uh, Jun Ligt is the winner here. He has the ball and ooh. Oh, very close, almost goal. The Tigers took the ball and shot it at the goal, but it was deflected by the keeper. As it's now uh, first half uh, remaining, so there's a lot of applause, a well deserved applause coming from the audience. Uh, as a lot of people have gathered here today to watch the grand finals between uh, Tigers Mannheim and Xu Ling from China. Hangzhou, China, I even believe. South China. Well, China is a big country, so it's good to specify that. No, Hangzhou, China. Oh, Hangzhou. The city Hangzhou. Oh, I, think, I believe. I South Pole. Okay. I don't know if that is in the south. Uh, maybe we can get some confirmation of that uh, from our lovely audience. I see 64 viewers are at the moment, though I only see Victor typing in the chat, who really loves the replays. So whilst we're loving those replays, maybe let's have a look at that deflection once more. French team uh, Namek is asking the audience whether the sound is okay. I, of course, do not really understand any word of French, uh, though I do believe that I saw some thumbs up in the audience uh, and I can only interpret what's happening now. Um, I wonder whether the uh, audience is as tense as the two teams playing right now, as uh, the robot handler from Sulink is almost uh, killed by a horde of Tigers robots uh, who want to uh, switch halves as uh, he doesn't really seem to be that disturbed. Um, gave some uh, side-eye looks to the game controller, um, who is pressing the buttons for the robots to move, I do believe so. As um, this is, of course, happening, it's always a game of professional uh, football, and it's um, things are happening. Yeah, uh, so it's nice. uh, let's uh, take the time in this, uh, like in the break here, to discuss the odds for both teams. Um, so if we look at the, at the stats, we uh, can see here that uh, last year uh, Tigers won uh, the small size league competition in, uh, in Bangkok, as already mentioned before, but indeed uh, Jun Lik was not participating back then. Um, and it's interestingly also the case for uh, 2021 when Tigers was also the winner, but Jun Lik was not participating. Uh, Jean Lick became four. Uh, became first uh, four times already uh, since the uh, since the start of their team. Uh, they won in 2013, 2014, 2018, and 2019, which is quite impressive, I, I must say. On the uh, other years, also the other years, they became either second, third, or fourth. Quite quite impressive. That is indeed very interesting, as uh, we. Um, I, we do see some very strong um, performances from Tigers throughout the whole tournament. I think they have 
haven't had a single game through which they were defeated. Uh, they only had one goal scored against them by uh, Immortals. So even against the other games uh, from Schulich, um, no goals were made. Even though I must say that uh, it feels as if there's a different Schulich uh, currently playing as the teams that we've seen before. We know Julie's is a team uh, where there are a lot of rumors about, maybe about their uh, dribbler or uh, the chipping mechanism, or the fact that they might have a secret uh, mode on uh, their robots. The transition is from noob to expert. Do you know anything about their ties? Uh, well, I just uh, heard that that rumor was uh, brought to us by uh, Colin from Tigers, who uh, feel that uh, there might be uh, two sort of sides to the coin of the uh, shoe linked AI. Um, I have uh, taken a very sneak peek yesterday uh, just behind the uh, programmers of the team as I went to look at their uh, game interface and I saw something very interesting on the uh, bottom right corner where they even have a small little graph that is mapping the elevation of the ball which uh, shows something I believe is quite incredible as they really know at all times where the ball is and how to control it and manipulate it. Of course, we've heard the uh, our mechanic, uh, Brunon, from the Road in Twente, uh, talk uh, about the chipper design or the kick, no, the dribbler design. Um, and of course, we've heard a lot of things about uh, the robots from Tigers. They are very impressive. They have incredibly looking eyes as um, I do believe that uh, Namek is talking about that we will continue the game in a, a short while. I'm not too sure. Uh, as uh, the teams are going head to head, it's still 0 0 at half time as uh, we're looking forward what the game will bring. But, Amy, maybe a question to you. Um, if the teams will not score in the next half, what will happen? What will happen? Well, first, we get an overtime. So, if uh, it is a draw at the end of the second half, either 0 0, 1 to 1, or whatever it may be. Um, we will get overtime, and even in overtime, uh, no goal is made. Uh, we will go to penalties, uh, shootouts. Yes, that would be uh, an incredible sight to see as well. As I would really hope for this game to go on as long as humanly possible. As we have a look at the broad uh, side of the field, we see a lot of people have gathered around. Everyone is holding their breaths as we wait for the second half to continue. Kick off for Schilling. They are the same entire team. So uh, the, the images are processed by computers and they have like an AI to uh, send from it. As we uh, wait for the kick of the happen, we look at this juicy image from the uh, keeper Gandalf. Um, as we notice that uh, Julik has been awarded a yellow card and therefore now has to take the robot off the field. Why has this been? Because they kicked the ball too fast, uh, among other things. Actually, no, they kicked the ball three times too fast, as the audio is fine. As we get some mixed signals here from the uh, from the audience at home, we um, uh, really try to give you the best possible audio, even though there's a lot of noise going on from uh, both the uh, audience around us as well as uh, the uh, room here in general. So we see some nice passes going on on the field. One even into the far corner. Oh, but unfortunately, it is dribbled out of the field, uh, leaving a ball placement for Tigers, uh, which executed that very nicely. Yes, well done, and the game can continue. As the ball is now placed by Tigers um, and passed through a robot from Julik, as uh, the ball is now chipped over the defense, and there's a 1 2 as we. Did we swap half during halftime? I don't think we did, right? No, we didn't. Ah, that is my confusion. Yeah, so the colors stayed the same and the uh, sides stayed the same. I guess there was the German beforehand uh, robot handlers. As the game is now halted, as we wait for the um, ball to be placed from uh, Tigers in the corner of the uh, Junlek goal. 
You only know the behavior of the other space and the inner So you can. As there are some potential shots from the Tigers uh, attackers. As they're trying to play pass the ball around in order to free up some room for the goal, as there's now a Schoenlink defender number one who is taking over the ball and is exerting some very nice control. As the keeper uh, is not bothered by anything that's happening here right now and does a great shift to the other side of the field. We do see a lot of excitement going on at, at the team members of Tigers who are shouting at the robots, waving, jumping up and down because this is such a thrilling game where Azul Lix uh, is trying to keep its cool. Uh, a lot of uh, cameras in the air there to capture everything that's going on. The ship key, yeah. It's, uh, it's called the ship key. Oh, it's now a possibility for the Azul Lix attacker number four to score as there's Gandalf. Oh. Who can now push the ball towards Schulich? It's oh. up! It shoots about to the side where it is caught by uh, the, the Tigers robot. But now a discussion is going on because uh, the robot from Zulnik might have been too close to the defense area uh, while uh, Gandalf uh, wanted to kick the ball back into the game. This also resulted in a yellow card for uh, Zulnik, meaning they had to take out a robot for two minutes. As I think it does appear that uh, the robot from Zulnik has um, Touch the ball in the defense area, and as I will try and save the replay, maybe we can have a quick look at it. Whether we can indeed see that this is the case, as I will not switch, uh, it does appear so that we have missed that part. Um, as this replay is only us uh, talking a little bit over the game, uh, some more. See if we can get any updates from our vision experts uh, that has to see next to referees to uh, find out what the discussion is about that's going on at the moment with two referees and both robot handlers. at home uh, who isn't really aware or hasn't read the title of the stream you're watching the grand finals between tigers monheim and chun from chun licked from china as i have to really watch my pronunciation and i apologize to all the chinese viewers out there as a dutch native speaker um i am uh, not too great with the names of all the teams here as uh, i do believe that there's a comment here from mark wang who um i hope i pronounce your name correctly who uh, says that the tigers robot perhaps pushed shun licks uh, robot to the penalty area um however we're getting some other signals from our vision expert who's saying that a shoot, uh, like robot shun -Lick might have touched the ball within the defense area of tigers uh this could have been uh, well this if this is the case it's a foul of course leading to a free kick for tigers and then there's also why there is now a call for robot substitution as uh because the robot of shun -Lick has taken the um has taken the uh, ball from, um, or sort of uh, has been pushed possibly into the defense area, but then touched the ball, meaning that there's a yellow card um, awarded because this is a foul, and therefore Ro um, Jun Lick had to take the ball out of uh, or take the robot out of the um, play or out of the game. And that's why we're now sticking at a robot substitution while there's still decision going on. Yeah, because as you think disagree, disagrees, they claim that uh, the Tigers a robot um, that was pushed. Um, because like normally it never happens that they touch a ball in the defense area. It's never happened to them before. Um, as they indeed have raised a challenge flag 
and maybe we can talk some more about what a challenge flex means. Yeah, so during a match, um, there are robot handlers and remotes, and there are multiple options on there. One of them is a challenge flag. You can raise the challenge flag three times per match. Uh, per match. Uh, when you raise a challenge flag, it means you disagree uh, with the decision that was made by the referee. Uh, you can then uh, talk to the referee, discuss what's going on, uh, and uh, they might change their minds and uh, your will will take place. However, if it turns out the referee was indeed correct and uh, you were wrong, you do lose your challenge flag and you also lose the timeout. It is really unfortunate that we do not have a uh, great replay of the situation that had just happened as um, it has happened before that the uh, referee team has used uh, our beautiful live stream to uh, use the replays in order to uh, verify that the decision was in fact correct. I apologize to the vision team as well as the game controllers over there uh, that I didn't press the button fast enough as uh, we wait for uh, a decision to be made. We also see that uh, both Lucas and Jeffy, the robot handlers from Tigers and Julik respectively, are uh, also discussing what has happened as we feel that a decision has been made as... Um, the order of celebration was going on, as we see in an unknown game event, but there has been a ball placement for Julik, meaning that Julik was indeed correct. Uh, and uh, the Tigers were with been pushing uh, the robot of Julik into the defense area. Um, in the meantime, Tigers collect multiple files, and the Tigers robot is driving himself uh, to the sideline where it's taken out. As, as there is a uh, fight for the ball here on the right side of my screen as um, there's a lot going on and people are standing up getting their phone type as a possible goal that might be happening as the ball is deflected and we move into the uh, far field as the chilling uh, team chips the ball away as uh, things are coming down as the ball just exits the screen and we indeed have a 10 on 10 between two links uh, as um, Tigers are screaming uh, for um, Lucas to call for a challenge flag as there is something to be challenged and we don't do know what to the ball by a Schulich but it was deflected as the um, heat is there here. As we don't know what's happening, we do know that e uh, Tigers has uh, called for a challenge flag to debate um, that we are not really sure of, but we hope to get some news from our vision expert about what is happening. As we do see that the team from uh, Tigers was very confident about the decision as uh, the assistant referee is sprinting across the field to also join in the discussion. Okay, so uh, there was a discussion going on about a certain foul that um, uh, got uh, repeated uh, every two seconds, which doesn't seem correct. Uh, but our vision expert is sure uh, what discussion is going on right now, since it is entirely in German. <laughs> our vision expert is clearly not the best here. I heard he is really good in French. Though. He is really good in French, uh, as he would probably be uh, better off standing at the uh, the commentator desk from Namek, uh, as he would perfectly fit within there. Uh, but German is not his uh, forte, which is unfortunate, but we do understand that's also, um, we're just only native mortals uh, who speak Dutch and English. Um, as um, we wait for the uh, referees who are now all standing across the, uh, standing over the screen that I believe has the game controller on there. No, this is the vision expert. This Everyone is sitting behind our vision expert looking at what is going on right now. Yes. It's very hard. It's normally they are indeed looking at the game control operator screen. Uh, this is indeed a perfect moment to uh, maybe um, comment our uh, vision expert uh, who has also been very helpful in providing us with the latest updates uh, during these live streams, but also um, actually installing the status board and vision client for you to see at home. Uh, as this is Emil Stierneman from Roboteam Twente, uh, as we bring this live stream to you live. And for the people watching, once more, we are watching the grand finals between Tigers Manhan and Chunlink China.
data booth uh, discussing um, that um, there that we cannot press the four buttons for the four cameras that we have fast enough as a lot of stuff is happening and the assistant referee is once more going back to her position on the left side of the field as uh, i still see some discussion going on between the uh, main referee and the robot handlers this discussion is possibly not going on in uh, english or not going on in german as the robot handler uh, from julink is of course chinese uh, lucas from tigers is german and uh, our uh, lovely referee is from brazil if i'm not mistaken uh, i wonder how that discussion is going okay guys i have very very good news for us because once again the stream our live stream actually determines uh the decision of the referee has no those hands in the air, for sure. Wave the round like you just don't care. Um, because the other thought of Tigers uh, kicked the ball outside of the field. Uh, however, on the stream, it was very clear that uh, Tigers were shooting the ball and it got deflected one of Xing Lake's robots. And then it left the field, allowing for a uh, free kick for Tigers. Okay, interesting. And also glad to hear that indeed the live stream is helping out. Because if I'm too late with the replay, you can of course just scrub back in time as this game is being recorded as well for uh, your beautiful eyes to see later in the game as we continue uh, with a free kick from Tigers that is uh, going to a free man across the field but defended by Chun Licht as uh, they're moving again to the uh, middle of the field. Let me try and get you the right image as the ball is actually going out of the field. Uh, to be brought back into the game by the camera operator from Tigers, who uh, throws the ball to the other side of the field. Yeah, so the camera operator from Tigers is uh, Andre. Andre has been part of uh, Tigers Manor for quite some time now. He definitely knows all the ins and outs of what there is to know about the small size of the field. Um, today, we operate the, the camera to also capture this grand final between Tigers Mannheim and Chilling. <laughs> So we're already uh, pretty far into the into the second half, uh, with a few minutes left, uh, it's still 0-0, zero to zero. so um, it's still anyone's game at this point, uh, and I fear that we might have to go into overtime ties. I uh, do believe you might be right in uh, that sense, as the uh, robots from Jun Lick are moving the ball back where uh, it belongs, as now uh, the game is running and it's up for Jun Lick to uh, to continue the play as it's very interesting and we might actually be looking at a um, at a tie um, uh, whereas the robots from Tigers are now in front of the field of uh, Jun Ling as the ball is swiftly taken away and now there's an opportunity for Jun Ling to shoot as there's some free room on the right side of the field but it's also defending <laughs> As there's some beautiful dribbling, I can't help but notice uh, by both teams actually, as there's some some defending going on, and we are back at a sort of equal still made here uh, between both teams with one minute and 28 seconds on the clock, ball placement for Tigers. But like you said, Amy, um, I do believe that um, this game might very well end up in a tie, meaning that we'll go into overtime, uh, which is, I think, something that is well deserving of this game, as uh, there are number four from Julian Casey uh, going for the ball, gunning for it. That's just a free run. As people behind me are screaming as much as I am, but now it's up for times. As the ball is once more defended. We can definitely see the everyone's very pay, paying very close attention. They're really focused on what's going on and everyone is feeling it. Everyone's oh, finally feeling what the ball is being kicked out of the field. It's time for a robot substitution. And a robot substitution on Zulik's start. The robot handler is calmly walking over the field trying to find D1 to take with them. It is number 10. I must say that um, I have to give credit for the uh, for Jesse, the robot handler of Zulik, who is will just swiftly replace um, the robot with another one uh, for not showing any nerve at all during the game, or so it seems, as uh, they seem to be very calm and collected in general. Um, the same cannot really be said for the team of Tigers as they um, are screaming with every move that their uh, team is making. Uh, of course, most of us are here during this beautiful game as um, the ball once more goes over the field and we might be looking at halftime with 30 or end of game with 33 seconds remaining possibly going into overtime and penalties as a result
Que isso? Oh, as um, there's some great defending again from number one from June Lake, as there's a um, a lot of pressing going on from the side of Tigers, as we're watching it from the point of view of the keeper. As there's a current chip and the danger is uh, gone away. <laughs> Amy, what do you think of the game so far? It is very exciting. I'm definitely getting a feeling rush. I feel like both teams created uh, multiple great opportunities to actually score goals. I do feel like Tigers were a bit on the other side when it comes to attacking, but no one is going to the defense of, uh, of Schulnick and the goalie. Yes, as we uh, move into overtime, uh, there's five minutes for the game to change anything they like. As I see both teams frantically sprinting towards the robots, I'm going to try and capture something uh, for the audience like to see. Here, that's definitely feeling everything that's going on in the field here. It's also an online audience feeling the heat that we're going into overtime. As I am literally sweating uh, from watching this game and uh, screaming into the microphone, I do hope that the, uh, the audio is still somewhat okay, as people behind us uh, are also feeling that heat. Everyone is feeling the heat. Perhaps it's just warm here, uh, but it's possibly the game as uh, we wait for um, overtime to uh, be over. Um, with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining, um, and then we can go into the overtime indeed. Um, in the meantime, we see uh, Julek placing another skirt on their robot. Uh, Tigers having a fierce discussion on the side of the field. I think it's mainly about software now. Robots uh, seem to be operating just fine, but maybe there's something they can do to make it even better. There is indeed some programming going on on the side of Tigers. Perhaps they have noticed something about the way in which Shunlik is playing. Um, I do not see any of the Shunlik members um, trying to program some last minute changes as well. So I'm curious to see whether the changes that Tigers are doing at the moment um, will actually break it or make it uh, during the uh, first half of overtime in um, starting at about two minutes. Uh, Robot Team Cement members, we always go to a lot of events uh, every year um, and uh, we always show uh, the audience like what the small size league game looks like and normally we played uh, the grand finals of last year where it was Tigers vs Arpers but I feel like the next year's team might show this game because it definitely shows all the highlights and all the thrill of a small size league game. Yes, definitely as uh, we're also here very much enjoying uh, the show as I really hope you guys do as well. Um, possibly a, a finals to be remembered for quite a long time as both teams are really um, giving each other a real hard time as there are no goals that have been scored and I will uh, quite possibly check but I can show you uh, the replay from a potential goal uh, of Tigers once more as we um, wait for everyone to uh, finish uh, finish taking care of the robots we do see that the robot handler from uh, from Julik is actually talking to uh, the godfather or the botfather of Tigers 
um, who has been around for, I believe, 13 years already. Yes, yes, this is indeed Andre. He was operating the camera uh, just now, uh, but he has uh, moved to, uh, to the field to help out the robot handler of Tigers to do the final touch-ups on the robot. There's 40 seconds uh, left on the clock before we uh, officially go into overtime. On the side of uh, the turning on the robots, uh, doing some extra check if uh, the skirts are attached properly. As we um, have a quick look at the replay once more, uh, one of the potential uh, opportunities from Tigers as the ball is chipped to the goal area of um, of Junlik and the ball was reflected by the key. I actually do wonder whether if this uh, ball would have gone into the goal, whether it would have been a valid one given that the ball went up pretty high. Uh, this is also a discussion uh, we had last game, uh, as I might not be completely on point with the rules, uh, but it doesn't matter anyway, as there was a great save by the tuning keeper. Um, yeah. Just a slow mo replay. I will quickly, quickly, quickly um, go for that slow mo for you guys um, as we start the game uh, in a little while after. As... And so there was a kickoff for. Uh, so yeah, there was a kickoff, and um, the author thinks there might have been a goal. Uh, but it's already uh, determined invalid because of exceeding maximum height. However, I do feel like there was a, a shot at the goal and definitely did not reach the goal. As my Spanish commentator... <laughs> As my Spanish commentator friend to the right side of the, uh, the field was uh, waving at me not to do the replay <laughs> as there was so much action going on. Um, but it is resolved that we're now watching live again as there's the first half of overtime with two minutes of game time remaining. This is a beautiful chip and direct towards the goal but deflected by, uh, by Jules Ligt. Uh, however, Tigers already has the ball back. Again, a fierce battle in the middle of the field. Uh, and the ball is kicked out of the field of the sideline, uh, allowing for a ball placement by Tigers. Mano, olha que da hora a transmissão, velho. Tem um campo ali também, na marca da água, né? Tem várias coisas que estão aqui. Caralho! Pô, falta isso pro Brasil, hein? As we see, the balls being chipped and lands on top of the hands of one of uh, one of the robots, but it quickly rolls off uh, with a ball placement for Tigers. But it looks like Tigers has requested a timeout since uh, the robot handler is like ready to go. As the game is now stopped and we wait for the decisions to come through. Now the thing about it, I don't think it's a timeout. I think uh, robot number 12, yes, so his name is ready to be taken out and due to a yellow card on the tiger side. <laughs> Which means that uh, Tiger's Monument is only allowed to play with 10 robots uh, for the next two minutes. It's actually quite some time. Great, great play ball handling from Jules Lake. I feel like we could definitely have a wave in here. Julie has the ball, ready to score, a great, great ball made by Tigers, and the ball is kicked over the sideline. Uh, Tigers took a ball placement. A successful ball placement. However, there's a timeout for uh, Julix as the robots get into their Z and T formation. And I do believe that now is indeed the time for uh, the programmers from Julix to make some last minute changes. I do believe they have some uh, things in mind as they don't seem to be sweating at all, um, or at least not that visibly uh, as the 
Um, the timer is already over as the uh, we are waiting for the game to continue. We indeed notice that the formations of both teams are uh, the first letter of their uh, teams respectively, and it just looks uh, very beautiful, as you can also see on the uh, field uh, in your left corner below. A potential ball made. Yeah. Well, it's invalid. It's invalid. <laughs> I think Tigers might want to challenge this. Oh, it was it was indeed invalid. It was invalid. Tigers communicating with other team members that it was indeed an invalid ball since the ball exceeded the maximum of height of 0 0.15 meters or 15 centimeters. <laughs> I don't know about you, Thais, but I'm sweating like crazy here. I'm, I'm sweating way too much and I cannot really press the buttons fast enough for all the action to take place as I'm trying to see what's going on over here. As there's a potential uh, opportunity for uh, the attack of Shuling as he's dribbling uh, with the ball. I can almost say pretty less. <laughs> I have to say, I feel like I have seen more successful passes from on Shulink side than on Tiger's side, which actually quite surprised me. Because I feel like Tigers is really good in passing. During, uh, like in between games, they uh, practice on the field and they uh, like keep passing onto each other, chips, kicks. All the words. So I'm not really sure what tweaking uh, they've done, but uh, I'm not sure it was in their favor. Uh, so, uh, as we have uh, ended overtime, almost the ball is still in play as the game will continue as long as the ball is in play. There's an opportunity for Shu Link as the ball now crosses the sideline. <laughs> As with all of the noise going on, we indeed uh, noticed that the noise filter that I've applied in earlier streams is also filtering out our noise, uh, which definitely makes sense as uh, most of the stuff that we're saying is very enthusiastic, but maybe not very newsworthy. Um, but I do think it was a worthy addition to the game, as we'll try to talk closer into the microphone when the game commences in uh, one and a half minutes time. have managed to uh, quickly catch our breath we noticed that there's 32 more seconds as not only the robot handler um from shunlink is on the field but also one of uh his uh his team members um as we're asking our uh, lovely vision expert whether there are some more updates as the uh, robots are being checked with 15 seconds of uh, overtime timeout remaining we will now move on to um to the game views once more uh, well, we are uh, waiting for the second half to start of the overtime. We hear that uh, Namex, the team that is doing uh, the live coverage of this game, is doing some promotion for themselves, and we will help them with that. Namex is a team from Bordeaux. Uh, they're really adorable, really nice to play in Division B. And uh, they're doing live coverage here for everyone who's watching, uh, but uh, not really following what's going on. So thank you for doing that live coverage in French. Yes, thank you, Namek, of course, for your English live stream. Uh, we're your favorite hosts, Thijs and Amy from Robo Team Twente, with our lovely vision expert, Emil Steenemann, sitting next to referees and uh, getting all the information 
when um when we needed so we see a ball placement on uh, Junlik's sides. Uh, well, there's also a ball being formed. It chips over Tigers. Uh, however, Tigers push the ball out of the field. Um, for another ball placement by Junlik. Quite successfully. Oh! As the ball is chipped to the left side of your screen, the uh, of, uh, the attack from Julink just misses the ball as it shoots over the sideline, ready for Tigers to uh, bring it back into play. As it appears that there is a robot from uh, Shun Link. Let me get a, a clear picture of it. In the left side of the screen, it's uh, driving into the wall. Uh, we don't know why that's happening. Possibly because it uh, wants to place the ball as we see the referee slowly walking up to that um, that corner, ready probably to take the ball um, that is supposedly lying in the corner out of, um, out of reach. The robots uh, kept uh, driving into bone. It's indeed very, very strange. I have not seen uh, Julie's robots do this before. However, the game is halted at the moment, and the robot handle of Julie is on the field. Um, however, I do not see a robot substitution on the screen. But regardless, indeed, the robot is taken out of the field as. Um, no substitute is brought back into the game, meaning that um, Junlik is playing actually with nine robots, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly ten. Probably ten. Probably ten. Let's, uh, let's have a quick count. I'll, I'll try my best for that. <laughs> Ball placement, ball placement. So there's yet another ball placement going on for Shun Lee. And yet again, it's struggling a little bit in that corner. Maybe vision is not optimal on that side. Uh, but I hear from our vision experts so also not really sure what's going on. I hope he has some clarity for us soon. As also Tigers is calling for a robot substitution here, as Lucas is sprinting over the field, going for Dijkstra. Uh, of course, famous for Dijkstra's algorithm, I would assume, uh, where you try to get to uh, a specific location with the minimum cost available. Um, I am not too sure, but maybe some Tigers fans in the audience can confirm this for me, whether that is indeed the name. Uh, Vision is appearing to be okay-ish, uh, though there is some stuttering. Uh, but it's but nothing, something that uh, the team should be able to have handled. As um, we see, um, see both teams defending, uh, our Tigers are defending from the attack from Jun Ligt, as the Tigers defender shoots the ball over their own back line, uh, giving Jun Ligt a clear, uh, a clear possibility for a corner kick if they manage to bring the ball uh, into the right place the right time. As we see the robot moving uh, to your left side of the screen, and it's definitely placed very well, ready for kickoff. And we see the corner kick uh, becomes a chip all the way to the uh, other side of the defense area, uh, which seems like a famous move now for Shun Like, we've seen them do this multiple times. As the ball is being kicked out of the fields on the back line. Yet another ball placement for Tigers. 
There's still 20 seconds left, and I think they executed beautifully. Not with a nice smooching coconuts kissing method from uh, Immortals, but definitely just as effective. As the ball is now shot out um, over the sideline, it is up to Jun Ling to bring the um, bring the ball back. As they will beautifully bring it back to the side of the uh, of the field, which you see before you in before we continue with the game. There's a chip going on to the other side of the field as there's a striker waiting from Xu Ling who is now blocked by four or five defenders from Tigers as the ball is once more deflected but number one is taken again and that's a shot on goal but just misses. to uh, fight for the ball as there's a possibility for a goal but it shoots just across the side as there are nine seconds left in the second half of overtime guys i feel like we're going to a shootout I, this will become a shootout i'm confident this will become a shootout and of course we'll be here trying to cover everything from the most crisp angles for you as possible as we'll hear from the um vision and old members uh shortly how this uh this sort of final uh decisions will be made in the game yeah but first a warning here for tigers possibly the last chance here in the second half of overtime as there's great defense from shooting Lick as the ball is returned to the middle of the field as there's a fight between nine and number three of tigers and june Lick as number three does some clear dribbles but then shoots the ball over the field as um half the time is now the second half is over from overtime Feel like Tigers is having space here. There's one robot spinning around in the center of the field, and it's not going into the C formation that it should. Do we think that Tigers might be having some problems? Perhaps hope they managed to fix this uh, and get ready in time for shootouts. Uh, perhaps this was um, uh, some last minute changes in uh, in the code that we uh, saw them making. Maybe they don't want the T anymore. Maybe they want something else. Maybe they want an exclamation mark for uh, the beauty of this game as both teams are putting in a hell of a show and Lipos are actually being replaced uh, with Gandalf, the goalkeeper, um, as he shall not let uh, Zuling's strikers pass. Um, making sure he's ready and charged up. Yeah, so guys, we've been talking about shootouts, that we're going into the shootout phase. Uh, tell us, what is a shootout? Let our audience know. Tell us, what is a shootout? Um, I actually uh, have to admit here that I'm not completely familiar with the shootout, but I would assume that it's a one-on-one -on -one between a striker from one team and the keeper from the other. Um, the teams are allowed to... Um, to dribble a little bit with the ball in before they have to shoot it and if the ball is uh, deflected with more than a 90 degree angle the uh, goal does not count well said well said thank you as um, i will quickly leave this then to uh, in order to move the camera to the right uh, position in the field as uh, we prepare for the shootout Trying to get the robot off the field while uh, Julink is still a bit more calm, uh, taking their robots out, turning them off, um, and bringing them to the side of the field. Uh, we only see uh, Gandalf and uh, the goalie from uh, Julink left on the field. Uh, well, there is some spinning going around. 
and truly exciting on Robert Handler. It's definitely time for a penalty shootout. As I see Tide rushing on the other side of the field, trying to get the best angle for you, so we won't miss any milliseconds of what is going on. He strongly, <laughs> he's fiercely walking back. There he is. So Thais, what do you feel uh, about, how do you feel about the angles? Get uh, closer to the microphone again. I uh, do feel that the angle on the far side of our field could be a little bit better, uh, but there's no power plug on that side, uh, as uh, will have to do with um, a very close up of the keeper and the, uh, um, and the goal, uh, which can be quite a nice view. I'll try and make it a little bit nicer if I can. Though, um, however, there is something that uh, we noticed during the shootouts, uh, you're not allowed to uh, take uh, a timeout, I hear from my uh, vision expert, however, Shuflik is touching their robots and you're only allowed to touch the robot or your probe during timeout. The referee is a little bit annoyed with this and screams stop, but maybe there's a language barrier, I'm not clear. Shuflik is not allowed to touch your robots. I really hope for them this is not becoming a problem. However, we do see some discussion going on as our vision expert. Um, is a little frustrated that uh, Shuflik was still doing this. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, they were actually touching it or if they were not fully aware of the rules. But we're here at home, um, once again, he was not allowed to have timeout or touch a robot or code during penalty shootouts. We're waiting for the penalty shoot. I'm not really sure what we're waiting for at the moment. Uh, I feel like the teams might be ready, the audience is ready. We cannot wait for the shootout to commence. I see Thais walking back to me. I hope he will join me again. So he can also give his opinion on what is going on right now. Ah, as I do feel that this angle is quite a bit better, as you also see my gimbal uh, in the back of the goal, waiting behind the keeper from, uh, which is apparently going to be Shu Ling. As we see, um, Gandalf here in the front, um, as people are now starting to move. Yes, and I have uh, an interesting update. Uh, remember when I said you were not allowed to have a timeout, the referees decided that for this and this one time only, uh, both teams are allowed to have one timeout during penalty shootouts. I cannot wait to see what will yes. happen. Man, this is exciting. And as for my take on this, uh, this whole event, I have never once seen a penalty shootout in my uh, entire life. It's also been the first year that I'm here for the uh, Robo Cup. So I do think that a timeout on either side of the uh, field is deserving uh, as both teams uh, are now picking up the bits and pieces of the field. Um, as there definitely was a scramble and a scrap here uh, between the two games, two games, two teams, Tigers versus Jun Link. There was a request from the audience. He would like to see four cameras at the same time. Well, that is just a view I am able to provide you with, uh, as of course, 
Um, you ask and we serve uh, as there is a good vision. Um, and Bera is asking, what is a shootout or at least shootout with a question mark? Um, I do believe we talked over a shootout and um, I hope it is now more clear. But if there are any questions, uh, if there's anything you want us to do, then uh, please uh, let us know. We mentioned uh, normally uh, speaking a timeout would not be allowed before a shootout because this game is so tense and uh, because we feel that uh, both teams are very very uh, challenging to one another and indeed as both teams have agreed there is room for a timeout as uh, it has three more seconds on the clock. For Schoenlich's timeout, yeah, they used the entire five minutes of their timeout. And the referee is saying no more touching the robot or the software. I am not too sure if Schoenlich is feeling confident. They're taking out their goalie. He might replace it with another one. Meanwhile, Gandalf isn't uh, bothered by anything as Rai1 is asking indeed for us uh, to see for cameras. And uh, I do um, want to let everyone at the audience know that Rai1 is also a uh, RoboCup Smashers League team that yep. is playing in Division B. Yes, yes. And I quickly took a look at the robots and have to say, uh, I'm really, really impressed with what you made. I just love how your robot opens up with uh, like a little lint on top. Um, where you can easily replace typos uh, and uh, take a look at all the good stuff that's inside your robot. Yes. Really impressed. And also like that you can take the skirt off uh, because it's connected by magnets. So that makes it very easy. As indeed, uh, impressive stuff from both Rai1 and from the two teams here across the field. Also from Namek, our commentators that are sitting across from the field that will be providing commentary in French. I do hope that we'll also stay in English uh, and that our noise filter won't cancel us out as things are getting tense here and the referee places the ball um, near the uh, goal from Tigers, meaning that Gandalf will be the first to defend and uh, number three from Julink, I don't know if they have a name, uh, will be taking the first penalty. Man. the fact that uh, we want you to be able to see as much as possible will for temporarily remove ourselves um, from the um, from the goal home perspective um, as we cannot take the heat any longer I would like to uh, give you guys a full view of also the teams that are uh, participating Ooh, but we're about to start I see uh, the penalty shootout is on the screen uh, she only has a goalie uh, in the goal uh, Gandalf does not seem completely ready yet, but maybe he will be the one trying to take a penalty. Who knows? As I'm uh, gearing up to get my replays ready in action, I would really love to see uh, some of those juicy penalty replays uh, when we have time for it. And if we have time for it, I am not too certain. But uh, I don't I'll think we have time. I don't think we have time. The Tigers is the one who is going to take the first penalty. Oh. And with this side, I feel like we will start soon. And there we go, Gandalf is in his goal. And Torvald, number 14 of Tigers, will be the one taking the penalty. We see everyone around this field is looking tense. Everyone is excited. We cannot wait to see what is going to happen. As I wonder, Amy, is that the position for the ball to be placed at the start of a penalty? That seems to be quite a far distance from the goal. As we zoom in on the uh, on the keeper from Zulink who is getting ready. And I hear a beeping noise. Do you hear that too? I hear it too as the penalty is about to start. From Torvald, number 14 of Tigers. As we uh, gear up to quickly watch a replay here. So during a penalty, the ball is played eight meters away from the goal. So it's a little bit over um, the half of the field. Um, you see, for me, why it took quite some time before the penalty shootout actually started. Uh, Tigers had to touch one button on the AI. However, as mentioned, you're not allowed to uh, work on your code or robot 
uh, during a penalty shootout. So uh, they had to ask the referee, and uh, the referee was okay with it. So now we're having the penalty shootout. So let's see what Shulik can do, and if Gandalf will be able to stop this penalty. As I do wonder, why is number 14 standing in? Uh, uh, never mind, number 14 has moved out of the way as it's number 3 who is now going for the penalty. He appears to be having some dribbling problems, however. As the penalty kick has failed by Zulik, um meaning that they will not be able to score this time around as it's 1-0 uh, by Tigers Mannheim um, as number 3 is uh, replaced after a uh, faulty goal uh, or a faulty attempt at the um, at the goal. So during a penalty shootout, you only have a certain amount of time to actually score the ball. And uh, since Schoenlich was not able to dribble, they were not able to move the ball uh, fast enough over the field, uh, running out of time. But now we're looking at Torvalds going for a second attempt all to score a goal here again. He succeeds, another successful penalty for Tigers. Well done. As I apologize for the last minute switch to the um far few behind the keeper, uh, it did lag a little bit uh, because you couldn't see the ball go in, but the de ball definitely did go in as there is a 2-0 uh, score against <laughs> uh, Tigers versus Zulink as uh, we're gearing up to uh, take another penalty from the side of Zulink as they're again having trouble and the time has ran out. Um, I wonder whether it has anything to do with the last minute go changes that Zulink has made. Um, as a not as number three is once more swapped out. Um, this is devastating for Junalek. I'm sure Tigers is very excited about all the successful penalties. However, is this the way that winning really feels like a victory? I uh, would have liked to see something else. I would like to see these teams once more go head to head in a penalty shootout. The very first one I've seen in my life. As uh, we wait and anxiously watch as. Uh, Tomales will ah will once more score against uh, Shun Ling as the keeper all of a sudden doesn't seem to be moving as fast as we are, are used to. Yes, yes, I'm actually quite surprised. I feel like the timeout that uh, Shun Ling used might have not been the most effective one yet. And of course, that is also uh, something in this uh, game. As if you're making changes in time, I do note that you're under uh, a lot of stress, under a lot of time constraints, meaning that it might be very challenging to uh, really do some last minute updates quite well. Um, as we see that once more, uh, bots from um, Zulink are being replaced. As Jesse, the robot handler from that team, is looking for uh, the right one, the one that's going to make the goal on behalf of Jun Link, as uh, there's limited opportunities. And I do believe even that if Jun Link doesn't score now, the Tigers might take home the victory. Uh, yes, I think you might have a valid point there, Thais. However, there's also something interesting that uh, our vision expert uh, pointed out, which would be valid, that Jun Link's robots were moving during a halted state and I feel like the robot is like still having the same issues only 10 seconds are allowed the, moment, the ball is still in play uh, after 10 seconds the game is stopped Julian did not manage to score a goal Media Tiger is the winner of the Spall Tide League Road of 2023 here in Bordeaux well well done congratulations Tigers As indeed, it is perhaps a bit of an anticlimactic end to a very, very, very tense final as Tigers was battling against Schoenling, but won 3 0 in a penalty shootout, uh, having some technical issues on the side of Schoenling.
Wow, what a game. Well, Scythe, I don't know what about you, but I need to catch my breath. I, I will sleep for a week after this. It I've, was very, very intense. I probably won't sleep at all after all the adrenaline that I've been given from this live stream and from the... Um, um, Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that most things come in pairs and uh, uh, this exciting shootout match might not be the only one. The third place final is still ongoing on our MSL field and uh, we are going into overtime. But first, let us switch to the field. MSL soccer fields. At the moment, we have a score of 0 to 0. We have played two halves and we are waiting for the overtime. Thus far, the finals was, uh, or the third place uh, match, was not uh, the most exciting match. It had been uh, back and for, uh, forth a little. And uh, we will see uh, uh, what the teams will bring for this uh, this overtime match. It's the teams uh, uh, Robo Club Toulon versus the team uh, Lar MSL. And uh, this will determine who has third place in the MSL Robo Cup Championship 2023. And when we finish this game, we will probably uh, start setting up fairly quickly for the final match of today, which will be the mid sized league final Tech United versus Falcons. A lot of nervous people are here. And it's exciting to see what the teams will bring for the final. But while we wait until the teams get ready for the overtime, or are they ready for the overtime? Let me quickly check. No, I think the teams are getting ready for the overtime. You'll see on the right side, Team Lar with the red shirt. Toulon playing with the blue numbers, the black square bots. Teams getting ready. And it might be that you have some background interference because uh, there is a French commentary uh, for, the, for the big crowd that showed up for the match. Of course, to lobbying the French team. And we, that's the, the end whistle if you heard it for the Humanoid Adult League shootout. Now, let's see what this overtime will bring us here at the MSL field. So, here we go. Ball for Team Lar. It's the robot from Toulon going for the, kick, uh, for the free kick here, trying to position itself, very nervous robot from Toulon, we saw that in the previous match as well, all the tournament we've seen it, and uh, I think uh, one of the robots has to be removed, yeah, one of the robots got lost in the goal, and is now being removed by uh, Team Lar. Ro 
broke up to low with four robots trying to catch the ball, but they lost the ball uh, with a, with a d fairly uh, clumsy kick. But now in the end they do get the ball. And I see that one of my cameras just froze up. Of course it's the finals. And only during a fi <laughs> final live stream this happens. But let me show you this view. So on the, on the top left corner of your screen you'll see that there is a corner uh, I assume is a corner uh, being uh, awarded. I'm trying to fix my my camera, so sorry for the silence on my part. Uh, is okay. Please give us some feedback if you can over the chat and uh, uh, in YouTube. working again it seems to be working again all right sorry for that so both cameras working again and the referee almost got hit here if I you just be able to to step away and that was our first five minutes of overtime score still zero to zero and we uh, yeah we saw a continuation of what we seen in the first and second half and we will be waiting to go to the second half of overtime so we will have some time un until we go to that uh, that second part so I want to show you uh, a little clip that uh, our host uh, made here on the venue and we will be back uh, right after this I am standing here with uh, Elsa next to the robot Ricci that's his name that's right yeah that's his name and uh, our company is called Pollen Robotics Pollen, Pollen Robotics with Ricci the amazing thing is that it reacts I can wave at the robot and it will just wave back I can even uh, hold out my hand and it will shake my hand and the thing is I was wondering to be so reactive and so responsive it must have an amazing computer inside yes. what is a computer controlling Ricci it's uh, it's an amazing technology which is called Anael and uh, which is uh, located just behind Ricci <laughs> it's a human with VR glasses there is Anael controlling this robot so all the information the head movements the the hands is all coming from there and it is reacting immediately that's right so uh Anel is actually wearing uh, an oculus quest 2 or meta meta quest 2 and so you have a sensor in the in the helmet and you have two sensors in the controllers and they are defining the position of richie's head 
and Richie's uh, grippers. And so Richie is really following her movements, which is pretty cool. And so every camera here will be sent to a separate eye, so you have 3D vision inside the Oculus? You do have uh, some type of stereo vision that reconstructed, sorry, but because Richie's uh, cameras are not exactly the same lenses, they're not calibrated. We're looking at the next version of Richie with a proper 3D vision. So right now it's a, it's a normal like mono vision, but still she gets a pretty good grasp of what's happening around her uh, and she can manipulate objects, she can interact with people. Uh, so I will try to uh, hand her a leaflet and see if um, she can grasp it. That's amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. A human is the best computer still. It is, but to uh, just reply to that uh, joke that we made, uh, Richie is actually initially a robot that can uh, work autonomously. So Richie has its own uh, internal computer. It has its own software. And it's also equipped with an SDK that runs on Python. So you can literally program any application on Richie so that it can run on specific tasks uh, autonomously. What would be the use cases for something like this? Would it be to go on a holiday without really going there? Yeah, who would want that? <laughs> but you could go to work without going there, yes. Um, no, it, it, Richie is mostly used by people uh, doing research. So a lot of universities, a lot of research centers. And most of these people are using this platform to research uh, human robot interaction, generally speaking, social robotics, um, service robotics. And so right now, Richie is mostly in labs, but our goal at Pollen Robotics is to uh, bring robotics into the real world, to bring robotics into everyday environments. And so we're currently working on the next version of Richie to make it a very um, robust, a more stable solution so that it can be used in different environments such, such as you know helping people uh, helping old people helping um, disabled people for instance or being in the in the food industry in the retail business uh, there are so many different um, fields where robotics can be integrated maybe if i have a supermarket and i need somebody to fill back the products yeah. i could just buy 15 reaches and whoever has the time can log in online and for a certain fee can help me fill the, fill the groceries. Yeah, that, that's right. So you could hire someone to uh, teleport Richie in order to refill, restock your shelves. But also at the same time, you could get Richie to um, save that data and to be trained to later work autonomously and to be able to detect any missing items and to replace them. Yeah. yeah. Where do we find more information about the, the, this robot? About this robot, well, uh, you can uh, go to our website, which is pollen-robotics.com. Uh, we're also on YouTube and LinkedIn, and uh, yes, that's how you can find us. Yeah. A robot with a YouTube channel. I'm also really intrigued by this neck mech. Oh, wonderful! Uh, who, who, who controls the antennas over there? So Anel, who is uh, teleporting Richie, she can control the emotions, so she's like, she's not really happy. Or she can be inquisitive, or she can be uh, sad. Yeah, she's sad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. So she has. She can control that directly from her controller. Wonderful. Yeah. And this n this neck mechanism has this wonderful uh, things moving around. It's yeah. intriguing. It's elegant, also. It's a it's a spherical joint. It's called Orbita. It was developed internally, and so it's a parallel actuator. Uh, which allows for a very uh, smooth movement of Richie's head, uh, which also allows to really reproduce what a human head would be doing instead of going for the classical, like standard pan tilt system. And so right now Richie has Orbita in its neck, but uh, the next version will also have it in the the wrist in th in three uh, degrees of freedom, and in uh, in the shoulder and in the elbow in two degrees of freedom. So you really have some kind of human-like motion. Wonderful. I have to ask, can I be Richie? Yes, definitely, yes. Becoming a robot, step one. Everything yes. and the left one. Okay, here we go. I can't really see my hand. Oh, there is a hand. I can close the hand. Ooh. Oh, there, a cup, a cup. Let's go for the cup. A bit higher, a bit in front. I'm holding a cup. This is an out of body experience that we have. Oh, let's see. Once again, I will try to whip the cup. Yeah. Oh, 
too bad. Now, this is the weirdest thing I have ever done. I am looking at myself, being myself. Will I touch my, my own it, arm? You can come a little closer. You're still a little bit further away. Oh! Oh, no. This is the weirdest feeling in the world. Yeah. <laughs> this is so weird driving up. Have you tried it? There's a track. Oh, my God, my God. That's Hello. What you just did is what people tend to do very often. Really? I mean, like, pinching themselves, you know? And because it's like, it's metaphysical, you know? It's like reincarnating into a robot. So it's a lot of mind-blowing questions. Especially the moment where you turn off the glasses and in a split second you change from this perspective to this is like, whoa, reorientation. Where am I? I'm still not sure if I'm not wearing second glasses now who are showing me this world. I, uh, I After all, are you a robot? Are you a human? Who knows? <laughs> I feel a song coming up. Are we human or are we dancers? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Elsa and Anael, uh, for uh, the presentation and for this wonder wonderful machine. I was you for a while and I really enjoyed it. Welcome back to the MSL field. That was the end of the second, second overtime half. I can tell you, nothing happened. So the first three minutes, uh, effective play was 50 seconds. And then when the robots really got uh, into play, it was too low, actually got in front of the goal with the ball, but they shot the ball at their own player and then it bounced over the sideline. So you really didn't miss anything. So there is a discussion going on the side and uh, we're just it's going to patiently wait to see if we are going to shoot out as we expected for a while right now or that there will be uh, some uh, different kind of play but as you just have seen uh, there are a lot of other robotics projects uh, here on uh, on the Robocop uh, Bordeaux venue and uh, Liva had the opportunity to meet Richie which looked a lot of fun. I did, unfortunately did not have the chance to speak to Ricci. Harry van der Loo, do you have a question for me? Where is the stream? I will go and check uh, immediately if the stream is still online. It's uh, always exciting if People come running to me, telling me that it's not live. And it's there, uh, Harry, on the website. You just go to robocop.live and then you just click on the stream and you will see the soccer fields. But just a couple of minutes ago, I showed a clip about a robot here at the venue. It's called Richie with Lieve. And Lieve met him. And uh, it, was a, it was a video that, uh, that I've shown on the stream. So maybe... That's why you did not see the soccer field. So, Harry, uh, maybe you can help me. Do you know the what will happen now? Is uh, are we going to the penalty shootout or is it? Two times five minutes. So had now two time two overtimes are done. It's done. Yes. We have now it will be penalties, okay, yeah. So yeah, this uh this might be exciting. Maybe uh, could you uh, film the penalty shootouts please? Thank you. Alright. But uh, yeah, we have been uh, showing a lot of different content today as well to show you all the things that are happening here at the venue, all the different kind of, uh, of leagues uh, yeah, to build up to this, uh, to this final match here uh, for Tech United. So it will be uh, exciting to, sh to see 
that final match. But now we're going to the penalties for this third place final. And um, yeah, we have uh, uh, a lot more to show you today, but because we have been delaying almost 45 minutes, no, we will be delaying for at least an hour. Uh, we are now going into some improvisation, of course. Teams are getting themselves ready. And um, of course, we will not miss a second of this, uh, of these uh, penalty uh, shootouts. Uh, but I can uh, show you a quick clip of uh, what you uh, can see here and also uh, uh, next couple of years during a Rubber Cup event near you. Becoming a robot, step one. And we're back, ready for action, I would say. So, um, penalty shootout will be between teams uh, uh, Robert Cup Toulon and the team LAR at MSL. Both fairly new teams have been developing their robots for, for quite a couple of, uh, of years and they have been working closely together with the other teams. Rubber Cup is an open source uh, tournament where at the end of the tournament all the ideas, the concepts and uh, if possible hardware or code uh, solutions are shared amongst the teams. But um, it's also true that teams uh, uh, collaborate together during the year to develop. I know that one of the teams has visited uh, Eindhoven, Tech United and uh, try to learn a lot from uh, uh, how to program a soccer robot so to speak. And you can see that the development of these new and young teams is uh, going pretty good. They have shown uh, some uh, serious progress during the last couple of days. Um, and uh, they have been a match for each other. Uh, that is proven by this 0-0 zero to zero result. Um, but none of the teams have uh, uh, ever been in a, a penalty shootout match. And as far as I know, they have not been testing this as well. I did not see it. So let's see. Uh, let's see how they will how they will do. It's the uh, goalie from Toulon versus the player from Lar. So the robot has to drive to the ball and kick the ball in the goal, and the goalie has to keep it out of the goal. I don't think that I have to explain anything of this. Here we go, and the crowd is cheering the robot on. Yes! Lars scored the goal! <laughs> Lars from the Portuguese team. They previously been team Minho. So uh, they had some experience, but they have uh, rebranded themselves as uh, Lar at MSL. And I think there are more uh, Lar uh, teams uh, present here. All right, second attempt for the LAR robot. So due to the fact that the ref box is giving signals, it uh, takes too long to switch out goalie and, uh, and player each time. So it will take sequential penalties 
Here we go, second attempt for the, for the robot. Oh, it missed the goal. Third attempt. Here we go, third attempt for the LAR robot. Oh, 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 sky moving. I don't know the English word, but it was a sky moving. And it worked, it was a goal. So here we go for the fourth attempt. And then of course uh, it's up to uh, to Toulon to, uh, to do a better job. So they have missed already one. They have to try to minimize it to this only one, uh, one miss. Let's see. Lar attempt four. He's taking the ball. Oh, he missed the goal. Oh no, he missed the second one. That's very unfortunate. So you have to imagine that the, uh, the, the robot players, they are using their Omnivision camera to look around and they will determine based on the wide lines on the field where they are positioned. And from that they will determine where the goal is, pu is placed. So they're not exactly looking where is the goal. So if the, if the goal is just slightly out of place, uh, but it doesn't look like that, or that the robot is not getting his a correct location of the field, then he will not have an accurate shot at the goal. And uh, you will miss, just you just saw. So this is, uh, but now the robot from Toulon is, uh, oh, he's taunting the robot, moving out of his goal. He's taunting the robot. Oh, this is just a straight shot, go on, come on. Oh no, the taunt worked, he missed. And that was his fifth attempt. So now it's up to Toulon to get three goals. Three, just three out of five. But we haven't seen this team take a penalty. It's, uh, if the first one is a miss, then it's going to be exciting, I guess. Let's see. It's now up for the teams to switch, so they're going to put on uh, the shootout or penalty software and place the goalie in the goal, and then it's up to the, the team from uh, Toulon, the French team, to, uh, to score some goals. And of course there are a lot of French people here, and uh, I think they will go absolutely wild if, uh, if they manage to get third place in the World Championship Mid-Size League RoboCup Soccer. So here he is, our player from LAR, and now we are waiting for our field player from, uh, from Toulon. Some, uh, some discussion. So I've seen a lot of penalties from Team Tech United. And um, I can tell you that uh, some of the straightforward shots, they pack a punch and uh, they are uh, pretty straight, straight in the middle. But uh, the robot has the option to, to, to do vary on it a little. Uh, and uh, actually aim for, for the sides of the goal, which normally is, of course, a, a, a better idea. Uh, so the, go the goalie doesn't know where the ball will be. Um, I think that the, the goalie from Toulon, uh, if he's working properly, he's pretty fast. I'm not sure how quick the, the goalie from Team LR is, but he does have the additional uh, racks around the, around the robot, so 
it makes it diff more difficult to score a goal. So the robots must be within a specific dimension, so height, width, uh, and depth is all uh, predetermined, and you have to fit in a in a box. So they they are determining uh, uh, if your robot is uh, correctly built by just placing a box over it. And if the box fits, then it's okay. So within that limit, you are allowed to, to add to the robot. And uh, Team Tech Unite, for example, but also Team LR, they have chosen to add a barrier around the robot to make the goal smaller. And uh, this is even, uh, uh, this can also be an active an active barrier, which means that it can uh, be extended for a really short period of time. It can ex be extended to the left or to the right, um, as a real uh, goalie would would use his hands to, to tap the ball out of the, of the goal at the last last second. There is some discussion going on on the side, and uh, for me, it's too far to to know what's going on. But you have a uh, you have the the, the the image right here. And we are waiting for a uh, team from Toulon to take its sequential five penalties, where only three need to be scored for the third place victory. And after that, we will continue, hopefully very fast, with the finals where we have all been waiting for. And ah, there we go. Robots now moving towards the goal. Field player from Toulon being cheered on by the crowd. Robert from LAR being now moving into his position. And here we go. First attempt. Oh, quick shootout. And it is a goal. All right. That looked really solid. It looked very solid here for the, for the team from Toulon. And now for the second attempt, will the equalizer score very quickly? Oh, the goalie kept this goal clear for this one. What a beautiful action. It dove into the right corner and it just made sure that that was not a goal. Third attempt here for Toulon. There we go. Oh, very quick shot. And the robot was simply too slow from, the, from LAR. 2-2. Two -two. They have equalized the score. Three, uh, two more attempts, one goal to do, to go. Here we go. And again, the goalie saves. Oh, <laughs> the goal saves. Well, if uh, the next goal is not made by Team Toulon, we'll go for the next five goals. Penalty shootout. So this is it. This is it. it's it's uh, for Toulon. Uh, I think better for the older nerves to to make a goal and. No, the goalie saves it. What a match. As boring as the first two halves were, as exciting as the shootout. It's 2-2 two -two in penalty shootout. And we have going to wait because I think we will go to another series of shootout. But I think that everybody is a little confused because this doesn't happen often. So we have to check the rule book and determine, okay, what is the actual actual rule saying right now? And, uh, it's getting really crowded also here where I'm standing. I think it's uh, it's uh, it's nice to see that the, the penalties of Toulon were very uh, aggressive, quick, and decisive. Um, 
and I haven't really seen them tested, so they must have put in some effort into it uh, last year during development. Um, and they were very confident about it because, yeah, if you don't test it, as there was maybe uh, not that much development done by Team Lar because the two misses were very unfortunate. Uh, at one point, the goalie was out of his goal completely from Toulon, and they still missed, and uh, that was very unfortunate. Otherwise, this this would have been it. So it's uh, it's going to be exciting to see what will happen uh, in this uh, second set of shootout. I'm still expecting there uh, to be a second set because the teams are frantically trying to get the robots ready. So the teams are allowed in uh, 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 during half times or uh, in between time like this to uh, change software. They are allowed to uh, upload uh, or or exchange, uh, exchange new codes. Um, during a match, you're always uh, allowed to repair hardware if you're fast enough and uh, during a match you're only allowed to restart the computer you're not really allowed to change code during the match if the robots uh, on the side of the field so now they have the opportunity to change something uh, but i doubt that from this five penalties you could uh, implement or improve code very fast so it will be small changes small tweaks time just uh, just goes on we have one uh, one hour delay right now for the final but I think uh, this is a good appetizer for that final and uh, here we go goalie from Toulon moving towards its goal and it is the player from from lar who has kind of lost his way let me try to show you it's uh, on the right side of your screen it's uh, cuddled away behind the, by the goal maybe it has a little stage right because the crowd is growing uh, a lot right now and let's see what the referee says so if they okay they if they want to remove the player, they have to remove it from play. Now let's see what's happening. Now for me it's getting a little difficult to actually determine the... Not sure if you can hear uh, Lieve is in, in English explaining uh, to the crowd what is uh, uh, what will be happening when the shootout ends in a in a tie. And then they will take the technical and the uh, uh, scientific challenge scores, and the one who scored better in both uh, will, in the end, be the victor of this this third place. Um, but now we will go to the second set of shootout. It's Alayar going for the first first attempt. It's hesitating. It's hesitating. Oh no, it missed on the other side. Very unfortunate. There we go for the second attempt. And that one went in, all right, okay. That's a goal. So 
Third attempt coming up. Oh, and it missed. So, uh, the scores for the scientific challenge. And there we go for the fourth attempt. Let me just watch this fourth attempt and it went in. All right. So the scientific and technical challenge scores added together makes a difference of four points. Four points in the advantage of Rubber Club Toulon. So when this is equalized, the Rubber Club Toulon will win. Let's go and see the next attempt. I think it's the last attempt. And it went in. So that's three, three goals. is the goalie from Team LAR moving towards the goal. Here we go, first attempt by Toulon. Quick again, and it's stopped, stopped. Stopped by LAR. They have four, four attempts left. They have to score three. Oh no. Four attempts left. They have to score three. So let's see what will happen now. Second attempt. Quick again. Yeah, and it's scored. All right. Three attempts left. Uh, yeah, three attempts left. Three attempts left. There we go, third attempt. It keeps doing this. It will be okay, let's see what the goalie can do. What will the goal? And it is a goal! One more to go, Will give him the victory but of course they would probably want to have two one more goal there we go there we go oh it's stopped by LAR oh it's stopped one more attempt this is it it's all or nothing for too long this has to go in if it's not going in, it's the Portuguese team who takes it from the French team. Here we go. Here we go. It's Toulon! Toulon wins third place. Equal shootout, five to five. 
but they take the advantage overall in the tournament. Their scores were better in the scientific challenge and in the technical challenge, but they have also scored more goals than LAR during this tournament. And uh, yeah, I'm already hyped to the max. And we still have to start with our main course, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to go to the finals of the MSL RoboCup 2023. So we will take a very, very quick break, but we'll be back with you shortly. The teams will get ready, and so will we. So uh, hopefully we will see you soon. Uh, we also have a very uh, nice video about uh, uh, Spot and Cheetah and uh, René van der Molengraft uh, will explain you exactly uh, why next year Tech United will probably play football with the Cheetah. Part of the promo team for Robocop 2024 is a very famous robot, the uh, Spot Platform by Boston Dynamics. Very impressive equilibrium, but can we play robot football with Spot? Short answer, no. <laughs> because it's a completely closed platform. It was not designed to change the locomotion skills. You can build applications on top of it, but only applications that are not changing the locomotion skills. So you cannot play soccer because Spot was not designed to play soccer. And also, uh, object avoidance is very hard-coded in the core of Spot to avoid objects such as the ball, and you cannot overrule it. So all the small obstacles on the ground are per definition avoided, always. Objects in front of Spot can be avoided or can not be avoided. That's, that's optional for the user. But on the ground, it's it's yeah compulsory that Spot will also try always try to avoid those. Completely sealed off in the software, uh, not to be not hackable. It's compiled code; you cannot change it. But luckily enough, other developers have seen this quadruped uh, robots and what they can do, and they have developed uh, platforms that you can use. Yes, indeed, and one of them is the platform, the Mini Cheetah, uh, designed by. Uh, MIT, completely open source in hardware and software, so there we can actually change even the low-level locomotion skills of the Mini Cheetah itself, which is great if you want to play soccer. We have a Cheetah right here. If you want it to bump into objects, you can make it bump into objects. Uh, you can, can you make it kick a ball and give it direction to a ball? So that's something that we are going to develop in the coming year. The soccer skills that you need uh, to be able to dribble, to kick the ball, to make all kinds of motion that you will typically want to do in soccer play. How long until we see this kind of robot in an official robot football match? I hope next year. And the reason that, I, that it is such a short term is that already there have been efforts being made in the world in different research groups that show that uh, the Mini Cheetah is perfectly able to be a goalkeeper, to dribble with the ball. It's not perfect. We will try to make it better, but hopefully next year we will have a mixed team here in the RoboCup competition where, for instance, there is a Cheetah goalkeeper or a Cheetah player combined with the real robots that we have been playing with for the last decade. Of course, the goal of RoboCup is to have a humanoid robot in the year 2050 that can beat the human world champions in football. How does this help us to get to the humanoid robot? Well, the motion of a mini cheetah is so much more human-like and also intrinsically safe. If you bump into a mini cheetah, you will not get harmed because you just get the, the mass of a leg against yourself. So it will not harm you. Uh, so it's a very natural type of motion. And in the path towards 2050, uh, it's a great opportunity now to start developing the skills for these quadruped robots. And then there is a natural path to having the mini cheetahs rise up going to standard position because the joints of the mini cheetah can go both ways so actually it can already almost mimic a human maybe only we have to add the the hip joint 
Yeah. But it's an open hardware design, so we can change it. We will add that in the near future. So maybe the football robots will go from four legs to two legs, just like humans in evolution. It's the evolution in a very short time. <laughs> then I think you should start with um, fish robot and then get out of the water first. Let's see. <laughs> I really hope to see these kind of quadruped robots uh, playing a soccer game really soon, hopefully already in Eindhoven 2024. United is ready. No one waiting for the go signal. Microfoonkabel nog even. Ah. Oké. Okay. Welkom, lieve. Hi. You have been speaking a lot of Dutch, French and English. Too many languages how in is, my head. How is your voice? Do you have something left after the shootout for the finals? I'm looking forward to some uh, action, uh, Guy. Some fast moving robots. Some, uh, some long shots in the corner. I'm very, very excited. So uh, I'm going to make all the Dutch audience uh, very nervous right now. Yesterday, I think uh, just like a half hour before lights went out here, it was I think it was 10 o'clock in the evening. Uh, the teams decided to play a friendly match just to do some final testing. True. And Falcons won. Uh, really? At least it was very close. I think it was like two two goals to three goals, something like that. Yeah. And the team was very nervous that evening. <laughs> well, there's so a lot of there's a lot of friendship between these yeah. teams and there's a lot of rivalry between these teams. Many of the um, players on the opposing teams, of the team members, are colleagues, former colleagues, yes. study together, Definitely. work at the same company and um, they really want to win. Both it's, uh, yeah, it's a nice mix uh, and uh, it's, it's nice to see that they are helping each other during the entire tournament even they know that they have to fight each other. So uh, let's uh, uh, of course uh, talk about the setup. There we, we have go. Uh, Verenstaal uh, on, uh, on the goal. And I think uh, which robot is missing? It's uh, Groene Stroom who still left on the side. And it's the Falcon kickoff here Falcons immediately, quickly from the kickoff, trying to score a goal. And it's going all the way over the back line. Was it a corner kick? Falcons tried with a lob. Um, I, I think it would was a corner think kick yes, for, it's for a corner the Falcons. Kick. They have been dangerously be uh, dangerous before from this position. Robots trying to find their position on the field. Falcon robot moving in there for the corner kick. Defensive positions are very important for Tech United now. Oh, let's see, can it? Oh. Falcon number five still in uh, ball possession. But trying he has to pass, pass first. The ball. No. Very important rule when a robot uh, catches the ball, he has to make at least one pass. You cannot score directly after recapturing the ball. There has to be minimum one pass before a goal is scored. Kick off that Falcons. Kick off Falcons trying to find. Oh, again, good defense here by Rikem Brein, who was uh, basically uh, in the way of this, uh, this lob shot, which they've been trying for uh, the whole tournament. So Tech United being able to adapt to the play of the Falcons. 
the Falcons really like that uh, lob shot. Um, and it has worked many times, but um, Tech United robots are super fast. Again, Rekenbrein with the defense. This can go on for a while uh, if well, they keep playing like this. It's a, it's a similar situation every time. They go for the lob, but the ball is pushed away by a Tech United robot, but then it goes out again, so then it's a uh, Falcon possession again. Here we go again, and Tick the and Falcons. Second and five now, going for the lob shot again. again. Can't find a free free player to pass the ball to. Rekenbrein and Willema trying here uh, to to disturb this player and uh, oh, oh and that pass now here. Oh, but uh, who is going to get the ball? Falcon robot. Now it's no. over the line. This is a goal kick for Tech United. So now we might see some ball possession for Tech United here. And let's hope they can uh, create a dangerous situation. They have very good long shots. They have um, passes into the open space. Let's hope we see something beautiful. Yeah, goal kick Tech United. You'll see that uh, one of the robots is going all the way to the back side of the field. And there's long a long pass. pass will it reach it? No, it was intercepted. No. Good intercept by the Falcons. But still possession for uh, Tech United. Bluetooth here with the kick in. Over oh, it's Rekenbrein. No, it's Rekenbrein actually with the kick in. Uh, Bluetooth trying here for the assist, but uh, it's the Falcon robot interfering immediately. Probably a throw in for Tech United here. Rekenbrein. Rekenbrein and Bluetooth going here for the kick in. Or will it be a long pass all the way to Wilma? That's what they all do. All the way to Wilma. No, shoots. it's actually Lieke Motors, Lieke yeah. Motors with the first goal of this finals. Beautiful long distance shot in the far corner. 1 0 for Tech United. Lieke Motors, she was the best player a couple of years ago and she's doing it again. Wonderful. Kick of Falcons. It tried to turn and shoot directly after the kickoff, which is allowed, of course, but uh, Tech United robots moving in fast enough to block that lob shot. But now we have this uh, situation again that, uh, still, we still repeated Falcons, a few yeah. that we repeated a few times. Uh, Falcons with the pass. Falcons 6 to 4. Trying to find that player. So Falcons number 5 is really open. Uh, can they find the pass? No. Oh, it's uh, taking away the ball. Willema going here for the defense, taking the ball. Very uh, aggressive defense, very well played. And now the ball is free in play, but it's Falcons 4 gets the ball again. Trying to find that free pass. Is it going to pass to Falcons 2 or 5? But the defense of Tech United is pretty solid right now. It cannot find that pass right there. What will it do? It's really trying to pass to the, uh, to the half of Tech United, but I don't think it's an option. It keep, keeps looking for that, uh, for that pass. It's like a swarm of bees. Yeah, we've seen them do this before. Uh, in the semifinals, they did this as well. And they just keep keep going until they find that spot and it worked for them. So uh, why change it? Now it's a swarm of bees around robot number four who's just turning it's around. Uh, yeah, Tech United is simply defending it. You'll see that uh, Motors is keep swirling around it to block the player from actually passing it. So I think this is uh, they are they are kind of stuck in the loop uh, until something specific happens. And it's Rekenbrein going here for the assist now, changing things up a little. And uh, does Motors get the ball? Does Motors get the ball? No, she's still in a, in a struggle with Falcon number four. Oh, this is a beautiful dance. They are dancing. Very romantic. Number four now with the ball. Falcon four with the ball. And they did try for the shot, but it's Rekenbrein who deflected it. Ball still in play. Very difficult, a bouncing ball to collect it. But now... Motors the ball. Motors has the ball. Long pass Motors to the right. The attack. Oh! That was uh, Wielema coming in at a very strange timing. I know that the team is trying to deflect the ball uh, off of themselves, but they're not sure if there was intention right here. They're doing some experiments uh, by uh, not controlling the ball first, but just bouncing it away and hoping to score a goal that way. 
but I don't think they're going to be very experimental in this final. Oh, Falcons playing it right uh, in Bluetooth's uh, ball bundling. I still don't know the English word. She cannot. It's a ball control mechanism. So Falcons 6 right here. Uh, oh, it's uh, Bluetooth trying to make up for that mistake, losing the ball. And does she. She does. No, she does not. Seems lop that there shot is a lot of shot and oh, keeps it goalie out. keeps his goal safe. And it's uh, Tech United here uh, with the ball. Rickenbrein kept it in, but it's then in the end a Falcon robot pushing it over the sideline. Kick in Tech United. Uh, it seemed that Bluetooth had an issue with the, uh, with the ball control mechanism. Uh, she couldn't really get control on the ball uh, right there. Sometimes it uh, just uh, bump, uh, bounces against some of the wrong parts and then it doesn't work. Short pass. Long pass. Rijn, all the way to across the field. Motors again going for the aggressive defense. She fails. Peeling the ball away from the oh, that's a lob again, very dangerous. But the keeper keeps it out. We Eye saw shot. the hands of the keeper move up there. Yeah. How long can they stay Verest out? Verestal uh, has the option to keep the keep their hands out for a couple of seconds, I guess, uh, to the left or to the right. But when she does it, there is also a time limit until she can do it again. Ah. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that you really have to think about. When will you put out your hands, Ex so to speak? Extensions. <laughs> yeah, the extensions. Kick off, turn and shoot, I think. Will they do it? Yes. The, the lob, uh, once again, save. saves it. Can one of the attackers catch this ball? No. For six minutes left in this uh, first half, they only scored one goal, which surprises me. I think That's it true. will be more exciting than we uh, initially would have thought. True. Uh, so uh, I, do, I think the team is still very nervous. But the Falcons are uh, defending really strong also. Throw yeah. in by the Falcons, intercepted. intercepted. If they can play this out well, okay. now it can turn and pass or shoot. It will pass. Wilma. If this accept is good, Going it's for oh, too far. Oh. Bluetooth not, uh, not in top form at the moment. This is also something new that we see this tournament. The robots who control the ball while they're moving. Normally robots are standing still and waiting for the ball, and now they try to control the ball on the move. I'm not sure what uh, how there, there she moves uh, to the other side of the field. Long, Long pass, pass all the way to the other side of the field. Not and, accepted. Uh, ooh, uh, being disturbed here by Wilema, making that pass not being intercepted, but in the end it's still the Falcon number five with the ball. And here we go again, finding that space. Lob shot. And a lob shot, and Verestal saves again. Against the bar. Controlled by Tech United. Uh, Rekebrein, Rekebrein, long pass. pass to Wilema. No. Ah, Robot Falcon 6. Robot inter intercepted, and now it's Motors with the ball. Motors. Motors to uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth now with good control of the ball. But uh, she loses the ball here to Robot Falcon number 4. Long pass, but it's not intercepted this time, but also not a good uh, good accept here. Wilema with the ball to uh, Rekenbrein. Rekenbrein uh, is uh, being bashed by number Fal Falcon number five, and therefore she loses the ball. A little dirty that play, but it worked for, uh, for the Falcons. But Motors do won't have it. Motors again trying here for the aggressive attack. Taking the ball away and uh, away. She, yeah, she managed to get the ball, moving and finding that uh, that other player. There Good it pass. is. Long, Long pass, pass intercepted. Uh, again intercepted. I think the Falcons are moving really well into position when they are intercepting these long passes. But the position is now for Tech United. Uh, if they can find a free player, then it's an excellent uh, position. Uh, defensive positions are uh, good from the Falcons. Short pass. Turn and shoot, but already a defending player is there, putting pressure on the ball. It's. Uh, I'm curious who will get the throw in here. The ball was pushed out, but I couldn't see by uh, what robot. Throw in is for the Falcons. Robots positioning onto the field. You can see. You can see. 
very beautifully see that uh, Ooh, they leave this open pass. space. They leave this open space, but Turn Robert Falcon 2, Robert Falcon 2. Oh, the defense of Tech United in place, and that bouncing ball is, uh, I think, a deflection from one of our robots. Here you can see the importance of the speed this of the Tech United robots. They move into that defensive the speed position. Speed was crucial right now, and the speed of execution from the Falcons was maybe a bit too slow. But still, they found this open play, which surprised me a little. But then three defending robots from Peking United just jumped into uh, uh, into that uh, into that hole. So Corner kick. that was very uh, very well Seven executed. Shot. Willem had to flex it. Willem had to flex it. Oh, this is a this is a difficult position for Tech United. It's a tight this game. This can be uh, can be a, a nice lob shot, and uh, Verenstal might not see the ball coming clearly from this angle. <laughs> Short pass, turn and shoot, dangerous, but again, uh, fast moving Tech United robot and a bit too slow on the kick for the Falcons. Yeah. Three minutes for this first half. Falcons number two. Defender moving very fast there, that will be a goal kick for the Falcons. Well, we see more defensive strength than offensive strength here. Uh, for the Falcons? For both of the teams. Yeah. They are very fast to take uh, defensive positions, and uh, so the beautiful long distance passes. Oh, that was great, inter greatly intercepted. Control, turn, and shoot! Was it in or the ball? I think it was think in. It was a goal. Are you watching the referee board? Yeah, yes, it's going on goal. It's 2 0 for Tech United. Dot. The, robot is, the robots of Tech United are very strong at this long distance aim, but they have to get in the right position, and yeah. especially against the Falcons, that is not, uh, not as easy as it was during the tournament. Robots finding their positions onto the field. Kickoff by the Falcons, one minute and a half left in the first half of the game. Tech United has control, could pass to the other side, yeah, but Dutut, was too slow. Dutut wins this, oh, tackle from behind, loses the ball. Again, fighting for the ball. Not able to, to get the ball. There is a high shot, shot and deflected. One of the reasons why RoboCup chose uh, football as a game to develop robotics is because there's another team who's always trying to make your life difficult. Many robotic solutions, especially in companies, uh, have clear environments with uh, very predictable um, conditions. And now you have to, uh, you have to well, calculate that there's somebody else who's always trying to stand in your way. Lob shot! High shot! Verestal. Verestal is uh, solid this match. Good goalkeeping from Tech United. Ball is still in play. Tech United trying. Uh, oh, it's actually uh, the Falcons here uh, with a quick, well, uh, quick grab of the ball and an attack. The Falcons took a shot there, but if that shot would have gone in, it wouldn't have counted because uh, the robot didn't have given a pass. You always have to. You, there has to be at least one pass before a goal is scored. Yes, uh, that's true. Yeah. Maybe they uh, expect the ball to be deflected at some point and find a better location for the play. Let's see uh, what they will do right now. They have to go for the attack from all the way uh, from their own half. Bit of back and forth tiki-taka there. I think uh, robot number six is uh, not moving. Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh nice block. Now the Tech United robot. Yeah, uh, and, that's and that's the, the end, end of the, of the first, first half. half. Where Motors was again trying uh, those uh, laps. All right, so half time. Ten minute break. Uh, we will probably start again uh, at uh, 15:40. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, there uh, uh, is a, uh, a, a, a new addition to the team which we haven't seen uh, this finals because the risk was simply too far. But uh, you have spoken to the team. Uh, there are two new innovations. One is the uh, swerve drive, 
and one is the sweeper keeper. Yes. And we've posted some uh, some nice interviews on it uh, uh, during uh, during this week. Uh, but you also uh, extensively spoke to to Danny about the the swerve drive. Yeah. Can you maybe for the for the viewers explain a little what what was the the, the main strength of this platform and why is it too risky to use it in the finals? Well, so the robots at this point have three wheels each. And these three wheels, um, uh, well, they can turn around, but they cannot be steered. There's, they are always in a fixed position. Uh, the way that you move around is that they are omni-wheels. And an omni-wheel is, uh, omni is, a, is a, well, it's a very smart solution. It's a wheel that can also move from side to side. So there's, there's small wheels on the wheel. <laughs> In a in a straight angle, so it can also move uh, side to side. Yeah, and the these these perpendicular wheels are, are are static wheels, and they it, what the only thing they do is dissolve the friction. Yeah, and so by turning the three wheels in different speeds, you can move in any direction that you want. But now they have a new wheel, and that is a wheel that can that can actually change position, just like the wheel you have under a supermarket car, but then controlled. I think in the in the interview, you the technical term you used was flubbida flubbida flubbida. The flubbida flubbida flubbida. <laughs> that's that's what they do in the supermarket cars. The wheels go flubbida flubbida flubbida, and these ones are, are controlled and they're super fast. So um, yeah. they, they can point these. Uh, I think they have four wheels. They can uh, uh, point super fast in all the different directions. They can even make a, um, a spinning movement uh, by by putting them in, in some kind of circle. And so uh, do, does it have the exact same movement as the the current platforms? Or is it limited in its movement? It can do all the same moves as the current platform can, but it can execute them faster. Of course, it's new hardware, and it was too risky to try it out in the final. Yeah, because they are uh, using it uh, uh, basically with uh, together with a new strategy called the sweeper keeper. Uh, and in this case, they will uh, not put Verenstaal uh, in the goal, but they will use a, a field player. So for example, it will be Bluetooth or, or Rekenbrein was asked to be uh, the goalie and then when the opportunity is there she can come out of the goal as a field player uh, and then they have an advantage of one robot uh, but an open goal and the serve drive it, it's very fast and therefore that is a risk worth taking because it can also get fast back into the goal but I think the risk um, was a little too large for this match as you can see it's only 2-0 but um Anyone who has ever played uh, with a sweeper keeper in human football, that's what you do sometimes when you're young and you're, you're playing in a park. You know the feeling that you're, you're, you have to be the keeper, but you're helping the attack and then they lose the ball. And then you have to move back to your goal very fast. And you try to stand in line between the player with the ball and your goal. And that's kind of a strategy they want to use with this robot. And of course they can use their speed because they're so much faster than the other robots. They can uh, take the risk. So the event is over. Well, at least it's uh, for the competition. It's over after this finals. Then we have the human uh, human versus robot match. It's always fun to see. So I, I invite people to, to stick around for that. Uh, but during the event, there was a lot of things to see. Uh, I already showed a clip uh, where you uh, went into a VR world and had to touch yourself, and it was uh, a little freaky. Uh, you explained, but in the video, you can see that you are uh, kind of freaked out about it as well. You. Your brain just does does not compute. <laughs> That's the thing. It's so weird, super weird. Are there any other other exciting things that you that you want to mention that you that you've seen? Well, we just did an interview with uh, Enchanted Tools, and they have built some kind of elfish robot, and it balances on one ball. It doesn't have legs. It doesn't have wheels. It's just balancing on one ball, um, and it they they had an animation team co-develop this robot. It's really beautiful to look at and to interact with. Oh, but I see the second half Here we uh, go. is starting now. We've yeah. been talking, but now the teams are ready and oh, it's kickoff is, uh, is already on the way. The Falcons uh, aggressively going for that ball and uh, they managed to get it. Falcons 4 to Falcons 2. Falcons 2 has the ball. 
five Tartus in a very two. good position. Tartus two has the ball and uh, defense of the Tech United robot is, is it's good. Attacker, attacker number five was in a very dangerous position there, but uh, um, the defending robots of Tech United uh, blocked the line of the pass. Nice acceptance, looking for a free player, turning around, long pass to robot number two, and then three is ready here, turn and kick now, can it get it in? No, the control of the ball was just not good enough, next attempt, but the robot has lost the ball for a short while, so it ah. has to pass. Yeah, Rekenbrein frantically trying to get a good control of this ball, but oh, the keeper is confused. And will she uh, just... Over the she line. cannot no. shoot at the goal now. She cannot shoot at the goal now because she has to give a pass first. She's, she's looking for a teammate. Where are the teammates? They're all on their own half, trying to defend. It's just her. It's just Rekenbrein. Rekenbrein has to do this all by her own. Falcons defending. Trying to. They are defending very nice and he even getting control of the ball now trying to find the pass uh, where is the, the other robot that they can pass to oh but it has a clear option but it just doesn't too take slow it to take the pass it's very unfortunate and now Rekenbrein uh, uh, giving a tackle but still there is the pass and now they can go for the attack uh, oh contact here uh, between the robots in this case, I think the referee uh, the, uh, didn't like the, the contact. So free kick here for the Falcons. Oh, a tackle here by Falcon 2 and, uh, and uh, Rieke Brein. So Falcons 4 here with the pass to 5. 5 accepted it. Uh, Bluetooth now going for that uh, attack again. A kick on Wielema in this case, deflecting the ball. Ball still in play. Wielema got the ball. Wielema with the ball. Getting tapped to from the other behind, side, the turn ball. and shoot. And yes, yes it's a goal. Lieke Motors. 3 0 for Tech United. When they get in the right position, they almost always score, but Falcons make it very difficult for them to get in this exact uh, attacking position. Goalkeeper of the Falcons uh, seems to be. Um, a bit less precise than the goalkeeper of uh, Tech United. Kick off been taken. Oh, quick, uh, quick try at the goal. I think the Falcons had more shots on goal uh, today with this lob strategy yeah. to give a lob ball from far away. I do know that from kick off they always immediately shoot for the goal because they just hope to get lucky because they know that from that position they most of the time cannot get into an attacking situation. So they simply said, okay, immediately kick at the goal. When we're lucky, it gets in once or twice. So number two can kick at the goal now if it wants. Number four has the ball. Game was stopped. I do not know why. This will be a free kick for Tech United. The push was too hard, apparently. Motors going for the free kick. Pass to the other side, long ball, oh, yes, great, the is the accept side. control, Willemar. it's good, and Willemar shot, with a hard, and oh, hard shot, but deflected, I think, by the goalie, just wide, Falcon goalie doing an excellent job here, it was a wide shot, was not touched by uh, the goalkeeper, no. it's a goal kick, it's actually a goal kick, yeah, you're right, 10 minutes left on this, second half, so Tech United Robots have to move out of the way, Taking up some positions around the robots. Pass. A pass to Ralph Falcon number four. Control is good. Lost the ball for a while. Shot at goal. Oh! In. Falcon scored. Three to one. Beautiful goal. Three against one. This game is not over. More than 10 minutes left. Tech United. This is the first time I have to say this is uh, this week. True. During a match. Rekke Brein and Bluetooth. There we go. Okay. Bluetooth going for the pass back to uh, Rekke Brein. 
Take a line looking for another player, maybe, or going for the goal. No, she's looking for another player, loses the ball. Gets control again, now back to Bluetooth. Bluetooth, who looks to be in form after that first uh, half, and there she scores! Wow. Very, very tiny space, but she managed to find uh, find the room for that uh, for that goal. That was a nice goal. They didn't leave a lot of space. Uh, uh, the robot was turning around a bit, um, keeping the ball away from the um, the control control mechanism of the other robot, and then making the right decision at the right time. Falcons kick off. And I think that the Tech United knows of this tactic that I just described because Rick and Brian is always immediately into position for deflecting that ball. Yeah. So, yeah. Too but bad that... that uh, that's still uh, the robotic part of it. Some things are coded and you, and you can react to it and you can code that as well. So the fact that these are autonomous robots, we see a lot of different plays, but the initial part is often the same. Falcon number two, uh, fighting for the ball, uh, winning, and then doing a strange shot in the in the dark. They did get a, a kick, a kick in out of it. Yeah. Falcons number five with the ball. Oh. Careful. Wilma, Wilma just taking the ball. No, she fails. Tries again. Wilma, Wilma, Wilma has the ball. Cannot shoot at the goal Willema now. Has to pass first. Get the ball. Here's a prolonged Good pass all the way. Oh, bad intercept by Bluetooth. She completely misses the ball. You can see the and team they now. They are unhappy with this pass. They really hope to score a goal out of this situation. She went for the long option. There was also a short pass uh, possible. Yeah. We're definitely going to look into that after the game, why this uh, oh, decision was made. Oh, nice pass here by the Falcons. High shot. And oh, it's Verestalo who completely uh, dives into the goalpost. That will be an headache tomorrow. It just uh, just went wide. Uh, goalkeeper hit the goal there. And it has, be, it has to be put back in the right position. Trying to catch the ball. We have eight more minutes in this game. Three goals to catch up for the Falcons. And uh, Tech United has the ball now. Goal kick for Tech United. Nice pass. Pressure on the ball by robot number oh, five. Oh, Hackers 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 four, five uh, capturing the ball. Oh, beautiful pass to number two. Will it be able to kick the ball? Oh, defense of Tech United is really, really fast. That was a dangerous that situation. Speed, that speed is crucial here for them uh, at the moment. The ball was bouncing around a bit in front of the goal, always a dangerous situation. But luckily for Tech United, no goal scored. Now it's a corner. Six and a half minutes left. Corner, corner kick for, for the Falcons. Number five will play to number two, but uh, our robot <laughs> is blocking the way there. I don't know if uh, she's maybe too close. Oh, that worked. That was I a straight. Oh, has, uh, has been stopped. I'm not sure what, what happened. I think it was not a corner, but actually it was a free kick. Maybe it I was. I missed, a I missed exactly what happened here, but I think uh, uh, this is dangerous for Tech United. This is oh dangerous for right. Tech United. This is oh Verestal. It's Verestal here who saved the day again. I think the free kick was given because uh, Bluetooth was standing uh, too close to uh, the corner point. We have a throw in for the Falcons. Their robot number four is moving towards the ball, but is waiting. Uh, number six is going to take uh, it. Again, dangerous situation after dangerous situation. Falcons number so six here going for the ball. Number four now. Again, it's quick high kick. Verestal. Ball in play. Ball still in play. We are lucky Ball's that we play. have. Ball's no longer in play. We <laughs> are lucky that we have a good goalkeeper there. They've been leaning heavily on the goalkeeper for years right now, and um, uh, 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 moving to the sweeper keeper, as we explained earlier, will be a risk for them. Long pass that will intercepted. be intercepted by Wilema. Fast passing. 
moving forward. Good control. Turn and shot. Oh, defended. And now I missed who touched the ball the last. Did it's going to be. Was it, it Tech United? Or? It's going to be a goal kick for uh, Tech goal United, kick. yes. Goal kick. Five minutes left. Time ticking away. Long ball Wiedema. up the field. Long now ball turn and shoot. To oh. blue to no. Ball oh. Dirty ball. tackle. Ball handling was not too good there. Falcons take over. Oh, there is nobody there. They not sure what happened. Pass to uh, Hari. <laughs> Hari, who is uh, uh, the one of our uh, uh, mechanical uh, guys. Let's see if they go for the long pass again. Tech United. Yes, Intercepted. No. Defended here, and it's a corner kick. Motors, is she going for Bluetooth or a long pass? Motors to Bluetooth. Bluetooth again in this struggle with one of the Falcon robots. Falcon robots capturing the ball. They're quite strong here in this area uh, of the robot soccer. Trying to find a pass. Trying to find a pass, but where is that uh, that robot? Where can they pass to? It's quite strange that she has this yeah. option and she, and she doesn't, doesn't want it. to and take it. Now she goes all the way to the other side of the field, and then it's Tech United with the fast robots to to intercept. But they just give the ball back. Okay, that's also an option. Now a pass. Ooh. Oh, to the Fal Falcons number four. Falcons number four. Defender of Tech United all in place. Four defenders right now. Deflected. One defender moved away. That was the sign for over number four to try the lob, but the other defender was already ball moving in. still in play, but now it's over the, the sideline. No. Three more minutes. That's one goal per minute. It's going to be difficult for the Falcons. Seems to be an, uh, a difficult job, yes. Seems to be a, a cat in the little container, uh, Guy. <laughs> Bluetooth, Bluetooth. Ooh, long distance shot, but the goalkeeper was there. And another throw in for Tech United. Oh, that's a very, very beautiful position. That is a nice position. Let's see if we can see the old, old fashioned ticky tacky play. <laughs> well, at this tournament, it's mostly uh, it's pass the long passes, right? Yeah. And when the control is good, it's turn and shoot. That's what they do. See if it works here. Willema, uh, the oh robot of the Falcons moved really in too <laughs> soon there. So that's going to be a free kick for Tech United. Willema and Rekenbrein uh, up for the challenge of the Tiki Taki, but I think that uh, on the far edge of the field, it's Bluetooth and uh, Motors. Motors feeling quite confident this match, so maybe it's Willema passing to Motors. What will she do? No, nice. all, the all the way to Bluetooth. Wow. Bluetooth! Yeah. That and was that's a very five beautiful. 5 to 1, and dare I say it, this uh, might have sealed the deal. Two yes. minutes left, four goal deficits. It's going to be difficult for the Falcons right now. But we saw a very long pass there. The control was excellent. Fast execution, fast turn, and then a very precise oh, shot. And again, that shot at the goal, oh! and it's for the goal. Oh, I, I might have chased it. Uh oh. <laughs> That's exactly what you were explaining. After the kickoff, they almost always go for a shot at the goal, and now they were lucky. And now they had that lucky shot, yeah. Well, I must say it's good to see the Falcons so happy too. Two yeah. goals against Tech United was something that they would have signed for, I think. Yeah, but uh, you know the, the the new and upcoming uh, teams they made a lot of progress because you see that they are playing uh, at the at the beginning of the tournament they play with two robots and now today they play with five robots. Uh, that's a, a, a very clear development. Wonderful and play! Oh and oh yeah, Bluetooth. Now with that's the, the kind of combination football we want to see in the mid-sized league. Very well executed. And, yeah, what I wanted to say. So, ASML, uh, sorry, the Falcons and uh, and Tech United have developed also a lot, and it's 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 really in the details. Yeah. It's really in the details, and that's difficult to see. And end that's of the, the end game. of the we finals. We have a new 
we, are, we don't have a new world champion. We, we have again our uh, old world champion, Tech United, winning this champion. match six to two. There's going to be a short sh celebration by the team, and I think we're going to get ready to play against the humans. Yes. We're going to watch the human match, but first, we have a small surprise. Oh no, a streaker. There is a streaker on the field. Let's hope this will not happen in, in Eindhoven next year. Robocup 2024 will be in Eindhoven. And as you can see, security has been practicing with the streakers. Probably protesting robotic violence of clashing robots uh, and falling down robots here at the, the, the Robocup. <laughs> so, Leve is uh, trying to find somebody of the team to, uh, to give us a quick uh, feedback on the, on, the, on the finals we just uh, seen and uh, the, the rest of the team will be preparing for the, the match against against the humans. But uh, yes, uh, save the date. Next year uh, in July, uh, the Robocup 20 2024 will be in Eindhoven. And I really hope that all the people that have been watching the stream will simply just visit us there. So it was an exciting Robocop. We saw a lot of uh, a lot of uh, cool matches. Um, development on the mid I see really impressed me uh, this year. Uh, applause uh, for the Falcons right now. Yeah. So it's tradition uh, that after the, the Robocup uh, final, uh, mid size final, that the winning team will play uh, against the humans just to, to see how far we are uh, uh, f to our goal in 2050 where we want to have a, a robot play soccer. 
and that's the, that's the ultimate goal because if you have a, a robot, a humanoid robot that can play soccer, you really have tackled uh, the, 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 the most uh, uh, difficult challenges in, in robotics. Um, so it's uh, it's going to be uh, exciting to see what uh, what will happen this year. So uh, there have been years that the team from Tech United was able to score uh, with maybe a little help, but um, yeah, the, the 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 match will be played against the uh, Robo Cup organizing committee uh, and the federation, Robo Cup federation, and they've been uh, warming uh, warming up since a couple of minutes now. Still waiting uh, for them to uh, invite uh, a star player from from a team uh, to help them in their aid. But maybe in uh, in ten years they they would have to because they cannot win anymore. Oh, there's a huddle now determining how to play. So if you can, uh, if you're looking at, the, at your screen, you'll see that they are all wearing uh, long pants, uh, dark pants, some are a little brownish or grayish, most black. And uh, there's even uh, one person who has these long black uh, socks around his pants. That's because the robots, they see er everything that is black is basically an, an obstacle which you have to avoid. So for the safety of the, of the humans, uh, we make them as black as possible uh, from the waist down so that the rubbles will move around. still trying to, to find some of the team to uh, give us a quick recap of the of the finals that we just played uh, but the team is very busy uh, with uh, a lot of stuff going on um, we don't have a lot of time after the match to, to pack the stuff and we have had a big delay more than an hour so um, I can imagine it's difficult to find uh, somebody available at the moment Tech United be, uh, will be acting as a, as a referee. see <coughs> the team is uh, uh, being put in their whole in their home outfit the orange orange jackets beautiful clothing custom made for each robot by my own and they wear it with a lot of pride It's like seeing grown-up men play with dolls, dressing them. After the tournament, we will uh, be collecting all the footage that we made of the finals. We have 
play some GoPros uh, on the field and on the robot. So watch, watch also for a watch out for the compilation video of this finals. Probably will have some exciting footage as well. Wilema also being, uh, oh sorry, Verstappen being prepared. So teams seem to be prepared. It's Tech United versus the humans. The robots can slay the humans this year. Bluetooth, Reke Brein, immediate shot at the goal, stole it from the Falcons, it worked. But unfortunately, it did not work now. Humans, humans at the ball, humans, humans totally missed the goal. Really bad play by the humans. 0-0. Zero, zero. The robots still have not beaten us. It's a goal kick for Tech United. Uh, for Tech United, oh. <laughs> passing it back, passing it to Motors. Motors long pass. Oh, humans intercept. Humans intercept, doing something strange. Humans, oh, good pass. And now Verestal saves. Still humans at the ball, but then a bad kick. Good goalkeeping there. Good goalkeeping. Good passing by the robots and the humans. Yeah, they're not really playing very well. I, I think Fast. should have uh, should have scored already. Corner kick. Fast here. And now it's, oh, it's a goal by the humans. Defensive positions were uh, quite good from Tech United, but of course, uh, human players uh, have yeah, a better I aim and could find the small spaces. There. I think it was more luck than actual accuracy, uh, Lieve. So, humans going uh, back into place. <laughs> Tech United going for the kickoff. I hope we can see a beautiful uh, combination football from our robots from Tech United. There we go. Take it right to Bluetooth, Bluetooth. Quick shot at the goal. Yes, quick shot at the oh. goal. But it's the it's the goalkeeper of the humans that saves the day. It was a what meat they? keeper. We have team a meat, meat. Uh, team meat and team metal, and a meat keeper kept it out. Meat team keep, metal. Meat keeper gave a corner away. Let's Here score this goal, Make come on. Make now look line. for the small opening. Motors, and motors. Oh, Ooh, it was a <laughs> probably a very uh, nice shot straight at the goal. But uh, apparently this uh, this meat keeper uh, is very fast in responding to this kick. And now it's a it's miss, wide. it's a miss. I think these long distance sh shots will not work on the human uh, keeper because, uh, well, you have more time to react. Verestal is very quick uh, uh, in reaction. She has uh, multiple cameras and uh, she is uh, also getting ball data from the field players. So I think she is one of the only players on the field who knows where the ball is at all times. Bluetooth missing the ball. Bluetooth now with a kick at the goal, but it's the, the meat keeper who saves again. 
Play continues, humans with the ball. Humans going for the attack over the right side. And no, this is too easy for Verestal. Too easy for Verestal, but that was difficult. From close by. You can see that all the human players have black pants, uh, except for yep. one. And they put some black tape uh, around uh, uh, his ankles, uh, below the knees. That's important because uh, the perception system of the robot uh, has to see them, otherwise it would try to drive straight through them, and that would uh, that would not be too uh, that would not be very nice. Kick off by Tech United. Willema, Willema Bluetooth. Bluetooth, looking for the Bluetooth combination, looking for the goal. Scared human. Oh, something wrong there. Localization, no, not a good control. So that's a throw in for the humans. Humans with the kick in. Oh, something went. Oh, kept it in. Very nice play. I think the best chance that the robots have is wearing out uh, the humans. A whistle from the referee. Yeah. Oh, offside. It was offside. The humans do have offside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The robots have offside too, but it's a little technical rule. So the the goal area there can only be a specific amount of time within that area and they have to move out of it when they want to do something with the ball so it's kind of a, a, a diff different rule but it's per perceived as the, as the offside rule where here Tecchinado was going for the attack but I think it I is think a, a human right touched now. it yeah, so it's a corner kick deflected the ball corner kick for Tech United uh, robots are moving in Come on, Tech United Reke Brei wants to have to wants to take this corner. Bluetooth wanting uh, defensive the positions. Willema Motors. Ready. Bluetooth. Ooh, nice well, these shot. Sharp, these sharp angles and these long distance shots will probably not work for the humans. I think they have to go for a pass to a central position and then they can uh, change the angle left to right and uh, confuse the human a bit more. Take a hard shot from close by will also do the trick because humans are scared for the ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pass Take lock. This is a good Take position. Control was not good. And oh, yes! 1-1. One, one. Goal by the robot. Put United nicely. The score. Put nicely in the corner. Bluetooth making that first goal versus the humans this year. And the humans uh, exchanging their meat keeper for another meat keeper. Oh, really? So, uh, oh yeah. yes, I see. A lot of psychology going on at the human side. Yeah, they were unhappy with Meatkeeper. <laughs> Meatkeeper won. <laughs> oh, a dribble there. Oh, Back nice to the center. Here. And now to the side, and to the other oh, side. Oh, good pass here all the way to the other oh, side. Lob ball, and once again offside. Oh, they were showing off there, the humans. Don't they try to show off, but doesn't work. Don't annoy the robots. Does One day the they're robots. the boss. They will remember. <laughs> they have very good memory. Yeah. Terabytes and terabytes. Willema. Willema has to get out of that corner there. Finds motors. Nice combination, oh, but intercepted. Motors gives the ball away to the human. Human looking for the pass. There's the pass. No, also First intercepted. Pass. Willema. Willema back to motors. Motors, nice all the way pass, to Bluetooth, but uh, Bluetooth uh, is defended by one of the humans. One day they'll figure out that the humans are standing in the way, Iggy. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I, I doubt, doubt it too. <laughs> I doubt we will be there if that ever happens. Humans here going over the, over the left side for the attack, now over the right side. Uh, paying attention for the offside, yes, they did, and it's Verestal, but Verestal, uh, I don't know what she does, but she missed the ball completely. Humans take the lead again in this match. So, uh, are we there yet? 2050? I don't think we are. Still a bit of work to do, but it's fun! It's fun, yeah. So let's try again next year. Kickoff taken by Tech United. Oh, beautiful oh, goal! Wow. Equalizing immediately from kickoff. Surprising the human keeper there. So for years I've been telling everybody that the goal of RoboCup is to have a, a robot soccer team that can beat the world champion in 2050. 
but apparently they are uh, putting a little nuance on that and the idea is now that robots and humans can play together uh, in two teams and have a, an actual football match at a high level yeah well that's because a why why would we fight yeah well that's a diplomatic story let's just have humans against robots and when they win then we start playing together what's what's your what's your take on on the machines taking over do you think that we should give robots a lot of room in our in our own world or should we have them just as at this assistance? moment um, at this moment i think um, machines or robots that want to dominate are a projection because our the dom the the wanting to dominate and being aggressive is something that comes out of our evolution as as as, as monkeys and machines don't have that but of course they can be dangerous if they if they if they can do a lot of things and there's a bug in the software then they could mess up things that's true okay enough with the deep stuff enough let's with the philosophy back to, this. <laughs> back to the fun let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go back to the meat versus the metals machines playing clumsy football with humans yeah oh yellow card <laughs> yellow card for one of the of the humans well well I think a second yellow card is out of the game or yeah. how does it work two yellow cards is, uh, is a red card and a red card is out we have had years where the yellow card was actually used during official games because there have been teams that are colliding a lot with the robots and uh, the team basically refused to to uh, pr improve that okay. and then at some point they just got yellow cards because yeah if you get hardware damage uh, it's it's not a, not, not a big problem but it's not fun as well eh? Verestal saved it two shots at the goal but they were saved oh what a beautiful pass Humans here showing now. off and yes oh, finding the middle the hole leg. next to Verestal making that Three to two for the humans. End of the game. Of the humans game. win. Humans win again. Humans win again. Humans rule supreme. Robots are not yet ready to take over the world. No, no, no not yet. All right. Well, uh, I think uh, the only thing for us to do is uh, thank thank everybody on stream for watching this uh, these last couple of days. Absolutely, thank you very much for joining us here at a RoboCup. We will of course be back next year, and then it is in Eindhoven, and then we can build our studio and have all the cameras that we want and that we need. We are going for a full media coverage of the RoboCup 2024 in uh, Eindhoven, and we hope to see you there. Goodbye.